Coca-Cola and the Birmingham Coca-Cola Bottling Company by Am South Bank, the Relationship People, by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Alabama, providing health plan benefits to Alabamians for over 60 years, by Bell South Mobility, and by Armstrong Relocation. And now to take your calls and comments, Scott Griffin and Samford coach Pete Hurt. Welcome into Touchdown Calls here, and uh, it's our, well, we're, in a, we're on a winning streak here. The Bulldogs are now 5-4, and four, trying to head to 6-4 and four with homecoming coming up this weekend. The Dogs on the road again, and they finish on the road 3-2 and two on the year. That includes a Division I opponent in Central Florida with a 14-7 win. The good news is they won. The bad news, it was a little ugly, but it was a win nonetheless for the young Bulldogs. Again, 5-4 and four on the year beating Tennessee Martin, a very dangerous opponent, although 0-9 going in. They threw everything at the dogs, and the dogs held on for that seven-point win. We'll talk about that. We'll pick our Sarah Chevrolet Top Dog of the Week. We'll also take your calls at 1-888-823-9972 or 823-9972 locally. We'll pick up the tab for you. We'll talk to Sanford coach Peter and have all kind of stuff for you folks in the next 30 minutes. Stay with us. Touchdown calls will continue in a moment. Tell me, my daughters, which of you doth love me most, Goneril? Sir, I love you more than word can wield the matter. Dearer than eyesight, space, and liberty. Regan, speak. She comes too short. I find I am alone felicitate in your dear highness love. Now, what shall Cordelia speak? I brought unto you a treasure of Coca-Cola, colder than a witch's extremities. You rule my fairest daughter. Of all the places you'd want your mind to take you, the bank probably isn't one of them. That is, unless they're giving away $100 worth of free stuff. At AmSouth, we are. Come by or call us anytime at 1-800-AmSouth to open a relationship checking account, and we'll throw in $100 in freebies. Now why bank anywhere else? Relationship checking with $100 worth of free stuff. From the relationship people, AmSouth Bank. When my son was three years old, he fell and uh, shattered his elbow. And I'm sitting in this waiting area waiting to, to check into the hospital. And I'm just frightened to death and nervous and scared. And I see all these people filling out all these forms. And finally, I get up to the, to the desk, and the, and the lady says, uh, do you have insurance? And I said, yes, I do. I have Blue Cross. And she said, let me have your card. That was the end of it. I was able to go be with my child. It meant a lot. I need it when I'm working, when I play. My Chevy truck goes with me every mile of the way. Ain't that tough in The Chevy S10. It's one top truck, and only Chevy gives you so many choices. Regular cab, extended cab, and the one and only three-door. And right now, an equipped S10 regular cab is only $179 a month. Hurry to your southern Chevy dealer, where you'll get a tough truck and a deal that's tough to beat. Welcome back to Touchdown Call. Scott Griffin, your host here. Let's bring on the Sanford head coach, Pete Hurt. And that's the last two games of the, of the season here coming up. And this thing's gone quickly, but boy, you're sitting there two and four. Bam, five and four. Well, you know, we uh, kids have done a good job. Players have done a good job since we came back from the open date and, and had some good wins. And I, going into the UT Martin game, I was a little bit concerned about us not playing real well coming off of two emotional games against mm -hmm. in-state rivalries and then you're going up to play an 0-9 team and you get up there and there's uh, not even grass on the field and it's about they said a thousand people but that's being liberal I think yeah. it was probably closer to 500 and and just you know we were flat uh, a little bit here and there and uh, just couldn't I thought we were hoping we could put them away a little bit earlier but we didn't but I got told the players I said bottom line is it went in the W column and we got a win and got back on the bus and and got home, but we, we'll have to play much better this week. Elon's a much better team than what UT Martin was, and I have to give UT Martin credit. I thought they played one of their better games. They threw everything, like you mentioned earlier, defensively, they threw everything at, but the kitchen sink at us and, and uh, you know, gambled a lot, and they had nothing to lose out of the situation, and, 
and uh, caused us some problems. And we missed a couple of plays here or there that could have really helped us. And, and I thought defensively we played pretty well except for one play. And, and so uh, we'll just have to move on to the next ball game. And hopefully we can, you know, get another one. You know, uh, I was talking to Lou Holtz earlier this week about Florida State. This is an excellent defensive team that give up a lot of points against or gave up a lot of points against North Carolina State and then annihilated North Carolina. I bring that up to say this. He said that sometimes kids get bored. I mean, you say flat, but I mean, kids can get bored in a game. And I guess inevitably with 11 games, not every game you're just going to be jacked up doing cartwheels to go play football. And this is one of those times you just hope you win those. Well, I, I believe that there's a lot of truth in that. When I first got my uh, one of my first jobs in coaching in high school, I, I started coaching with a guy in Mississippi that had been in, a, in it a long time. And he kind of told me that same thing. He said, you know, there's only about three times, three, maybe four times out of the whole year that you can really get that great effort, that emotional, everybody's flying around, excited. And, you know, so you get that maybe three, four times a year in your big ball game and said the rest of them, you really have to just hope you're good enough and can execute well enough to win. And I think when you start looking at an 11-game schedule, you, you know, there are going to be some times when, you know, you're just not sky high and emotionally up for a game. and and you just got to hope that you win those games and and it happens to you know alabama auburn uh troy state it happens to all of us and and uh you just hope uh hope that you can find a way to win those games sometimes it happens against rivals we saw penn state get annihilated by michigan how do you explain that uh not being ready to play that game you hold them to under, uh, under 190 yards total offense really the key was you did not let them run at all uh in this football game great front work uh, lance langdale four sacks and a tackle. Uh, a lot of people played some, some good minutes for you. Well, well they did. I, I think our defense, uh, I think the key for it was we control the line of scrimmage with uh, uh, Lance Langdale, Colin Horace, James Taylor, uh, Lamar Whitaker, our linebackers, Fred Bishop, uh, Alvin Garrett, and, uh, and Marquince Wilder, I think, did a good job for us. Lewis Coles, a lot of them uh, in there in our secondary. Uh, John Buchanan was up in there like he normally is and so we never did really let them get on track so to speak offensively and we forced them into some passing situations and uh, got some sacks and I, th I thought our pass coverage did a good job they tried to run some some underneath routes and I thought our linebackers did a good job coming off on some routes and and I thought we played well defensively uh, I felt very comfortable throughout most of the game and uh, that we you know that if we just didn't do something bust an assignment or something that we could hold them down pretty good and and uh and i felt like our players did that offensively not great but uh, work my life <clears throat> performance and uh, move well enough move the chains enough uh took advantage of a turnover early which was good and uh, sort of a workmanlike thing there too sort of the same thing well i thought the first half was was fairly good offensively we we missed it uh missed a field goal we uh very easily could have been up you know, 21 nothing at the half. Uh, we, of course, I, I, offensively the first series, we got that turnover defensively, and, and we went in and scored, made a fourth and six, I think, yeah. and cashed that in. We went for it on fourth and one down there, made the touchdown, and, and then we took the ball, got it back down there again, and, and missed a field goal. And one of the reasons, you know, I was sitting there thinking, I said, well, we're, we're up seven nothing. It's a fairly easy field goal. I'm thinking kick the field goal on fourth and one uh, to, to get two scores up. Right. And, uh, and that backfired on us. We didn't make it. And, and so that hurt us a little bit. If we cashed in there, then it's probably not so, so uh, bad. But then uh, right before the half, and we, well, we did come back and make it 14 nothing. Then we had an opportunity right before the half. Uh, we went three plays and out when they punted it to us, about uh, missed a couple of passes. And so we had some chances. I, I thought. Uh, in the third quarter, we did not play particularly well, which that's nothing unusual for Normal. us yeah. this year. But uh, I think that was probably the, the worst we had offensively. And part of it was their punter did a good job. Uh, we got it on the one and on the six and, you know, just never could get any field position out of it. So that, that was part of it, too. And, uh, you know, Scott, we found out in the fourth quarter that uh, we learn something every week, but uh, they stole our signals from the sidelines. Really? And so uh, I have to give them credit. Bill Gray signals them in, and uh, we looked up in the uh, third quarter. They had a backup quarterback that had been studying him the first half, and and Keith Williams, our quarterback, was standing by Bill Gray, and, 
at the end of the third quarter, he said, Coach, he said, that guy, every time you signal the play in, and we try to hide it and screen him sure, and, yeah. and, and all that type stuff, he said their quarterback's telling their defensive coach something. So we feel like they had our, you know, some of our signals. And, wow. And the fourth quarter, that last drive, we started uh, uh, sending them in with a play. I mean, with a player, should I say, sending the play in with a player right. on that last drive, and, it, and you could tell it was a much different. Yeah. You know, so there may have been a little stretch in there where, you know, they they stole our signals, kind of like baseball, and uh, and it helps them when they know what's coming. That's why you put a quarterback over there uh, to try to block that out. Let's go to Hoover. Lynn is there. Eight two three nine nine seven two one eight 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 two three nine nine seven two. Lynn, how are you? Hey, how you doing? All right, Lynn, how you doing? Good. Uh, I want to ask Coach Hurd about uh, what they were doing defensively. It seemed to me, just a casual observer, they were really flying to the corners. And it looked like their game plan to me to stop the uh, pitch man to uh, stop the sweep. And they also knew about our flanker speed reverse. So I was wondering if we couldn't hurt them with some counters, counter option, misdirection, and even maybe even a good old uh, double reverse or something. And I also wonder if, uh, if you'll, if you, might see that in the next two games and then the next two opponents and answer that if you will and I have one more question. Okay. Well, you know, they uh, they, they did a good job of, uh, of pressing us on the corners. You know, people have uh, have gotten to where, you know, they, they, they're they mixing up a lot of things uh, defensively on us and we, we saw that some against Jacksonville in the second half and, uh, and then UT Martin there again has nothing to lose and they're coming out you know, and bringing a lot of guys off the edge, so to speak, and and that, and we've got to do a better job of of adjusting to that and and uh, hitting some plays. We if we could have hit a couple of plays, we had Terry Salter open on a pass, and and, and part of it is, you know, our nature is to you know if you're playing good defense, we never could get the field position in the third quarter, and we, you know, probably could have taken a couple of chances here or there on a couple of other things, but at the same time, you know, I, I didn't want to turn the ball over and just. Uh, you know, give them some big momentum. Uh, it seemed like that we made uh, some yardage when Rackley kept instead of pitching, and also when Brewer turned up off tackle rather than hitting, hitting in going wide around the corner. Yeah, we, I, I think we made a good adjustment in the fourth quarter. They, the way they were playing things, we, we adjusted a couple of things where the quarterback now was the primary guy on the option and uh, adjusted the guard where he was blocking somebody a little bit different. and. And that was a good adjustment for us, and that's what kind of freed Jake up there the fourth quarter. And plus the fact that we uh, started sending the plays in, I do think they, uh, if you heard us talking earlier, I think they did in the third quarter, had a little something on us with, with some signals. Uh, the other question, you might uh, plan to address this later on in the show, but it kind of surprised me the score. The, the way the Elon and uh, Western Carolina game turned out was kind of surprising me, and I wondered if it was to you. And, just what your uh, comments were on that, and uh, like I say, you might want to talk about the opponent later on, but it kind of took me by surprise, and I want to wish you luck and uh, say keep it rolling. Well, I appreciate it, Lynn. Uh, you know, that, uh, you know, on one hand, uh, it did surprise me. Elon beat Western Carolina 17-16. It was a heck of a football game. They, uh, Elon threw a, a long pass, uh, about three minutes ago in the ball game, off the option wishbone uh, yeah. look that you see about once a game when you go against that and it you know for a touchdown a big play and and then they blocked an extra point uh, to uh, or blocked the field goal to seal the win it was a big win for Eli and they uh, they're a good football team they, I think they're a little better than UT Martin they I think they're solid they're, they're a wishbone attack and and it did surprise me that they beat uh, Western Carolina but uh, I knew they were good for their seven and three uh, coming in here, and this is their last football game. They're they're moving from they're in transition from Division Two to One Double A, and they played kind of half and half schedule this year. But I think they were, I think down three points to Furman in the fourth quarter, so that uh, gives you a little bit of an idea of, of how good they are. And, and uh, but both of those teams, uh, Elon and Western Carolina, you know, be good games for us. We'll talk more about the Elon Fighting Christians. We got a wishbone team coming in. Always a a chore to prepare for them with only one week to go. Plus, your calls, 888-823-9972 or 823-9972. That defense has been terrific the last six or seven one double opponents. We'll be back.
With most wireless phone services, you can ride around without a care in the world until you try to go out of their calling area. That's when it hits you that maybe you should have called Bell South Mobility. We give you the largest coverage area in the Southeast. And with our prepaid cellular service, Bell South Mobility gives you even more freedom. Stop by today and ask about our prepaid cellular option. Bell South Mobility, count on it. I need it when I'm working, when I play. My Chevy truck goes with me every mile of the way. Ain't that tough in The Chevy S10. It's one top truck, and only Chevy gives you so many choices. Regular cab, extended cab, and the one and only three-door. And right now, an equipped S10 regular cab is only $179 a month. Hurry to your southern Chevy dealer, where you'll get a tough truck and a deal that's tough to beat. What's racing through your mind right now? Finding time to get to the bank shouldn't be. Amps out now. It's banking whenever it's convenient for you. So come by or call us anytime at 1-800-AMSOUTH to open a relationship checking account and we'll throw in $100 worth of free stuff. Now can you imagine banking anywhere else? Relationship checking with $100 worth of free stuff from the relationship people, AMSOUTH Bank. Tell me, my daughters, which of you doth love me most, Goneril? Sir, I love you more than words can wield the matter. Dearer than eyesight, space, and liberty. Regan, speak. She comes too short. I find I am alone, felicitate in your dear highness love. Now, what shall Cordelia speak? I brought unto you a treasure of Coca-Cola, colder than a witch's extremities. You rule my fairest daughter. Lance Langdo, our Sarah Chevrolet top dog of the game. The guy had four sacks, one tackle. He has 12 tackles all year. Seven are behind the line with five sacks. So he, he doesn't make a lot of them, but he makes them count, I guess. What do you think? Well, he, Lance is a pretty good pass rusher. Yeah. And uh, we did a couple of things uh, Saturday where he was able to take advantage of, of uh, one of their linemen and, and lined him up in certain situations. and. And he did a good job rushing the passer. And a lot of times, you know, Colin Harris, they in there, they're taking on two guys so the linebackers can roam free and make tackles. And Fred Bishop sitting in there with uh, double-digit tackles most weeks. And, and poor old Lance and, and Colin are the ones taking on two blockers yeah. for, for Fred to get all those tackles. So, uh, you know, it's good to see one of those guys uh, up front, you know, come up with some big plays and, and have a little fun other than just taking on two blocks the whole time. Now, Elon College, all their losses are to one double-A opponents. They have played a common opponent, Furman, who they lost to by 18. Sanford lost by 19 in the first game of the year to this team, 29 to 10. Uh, you can play with that a little bit. That's more media fan speak stuff. Mm -hmm. But this is a, a well-coached team. They're, they're a little smallish, but that's why they run their wishbone. They recruit a certain type of guy, and you know they're going to be smart and probably not make a lot of mistakes. Well, th they're a good football team, and the, and the reason I say that is they – they, they run the wishbone, they're, they're kind of like an Air Force Academy, uh, you know, Army, Navy, uh, that style. Uh, their, their head coach, Al Seagraves, was at, the, at uh, the Citadel for several years with, uh, I think, Charlie Taft, and they, and they, they kind of in that fraternity of that uh, wishbone uh, option game that a lot of the service academies use, and, and it gives them a chance to, to play against anybody, and any time you can do that, uh, keeps them in the ball game. Clock's running. Uh, offensively, you're not going to get the football, but about eight to nine possessions during the course of the ball game, and and they just it keeps them in the ball game. And and defensively, they're very sound. They're very solid in what they do. They're one of those type teams that they're not going to make a bunch of mistakes to beat themselves. And so what you've got to do is go out there and and uh, and make some plays offensively and come up with some plays, and then defensively. You know, they, they can four and five yard you to death. And so you, you're going to have to uh, take a couple of chances. And it does, against the wishbone, it doesn't take but one time for right. you know, somebody to not take the dive or take the quarterback or the pitch man or something like that. And it makes you play assignment football, and that uh, always concerns you. And particularly this week, uh, today, we couldn't get out and practice. Uh, we were in the gym, and 
kind of hard to defend the wishbone. We, we defended it pretty well in the gym. In the gym, day, right. You know, but unfortunately, we're going to play out there where it's about 50-something yards long. And and so that that's a concern that I have that we were unable to get out today and and really get a good look at it. Before we go to Bill and Trustful, is it the number of reads you have to make defensively that makes it difficult? All the, the options you have to be aware of? Yeah, it's all the options. And, you know, people think, well, you know, they're going to give it to the quarterback or the fullback or the pitch and, and that's not necessarily the case you know uh, my dad you know he always says well you got to hit the quarterback every time well I said dad you ever stop and think they might be trying to block the guys that are trying to get to the quarterback <laughs> you know so everybody thinks well it's not it's so simple just you know somebody hit the fullback somebody hit the quarterback somebody take the pitch every time well what you got to remember is they got 10 other guys that are blocking over there and they might be trying to block those guys that are on the quarterback and those guys that are on the pitch so and then you've got to keep them guessing a little bit. You can't put the same guy on the dive every time, the same guy on the fullback, I mean the uh, quarterback and on the pitch. So you've got to mix it up. And, and uh, there again, they, you know, they'll take their offense and, and they'll, the halfback, he'll block somebody different each time. Yeah. So you don't know who they're going to try to block. You just hope you take away enough options and make them give it to whoever at least could hurt right. you, I guess. That's and right. Whoever that may be on a given play. Bill's in trustful. Hi, Bill. Hey, Scott. How you doing? Doing well, sir. Uh, Coach Hurt. Yes, sir, Bill. This is Bill Blanton. Well, how you doing, Bill? I'm doing fine. Uh, I just want to tell you that uh, I'll be there Saturday, and I'll be wearing my lucky T-shirt that I started wearing at the Troy State game. I mean, <clears throat> and I hadn't watched it yet, so if you look up the stands, and there's nobody sitting around me, you know why. <laughs> well, that's good. I, I'm glad to know. I, I tell you, I've got a couple of things that, that any time you get on a roll, it's kind of interesting to see those kind of things. Uh, one is I, uh, I changed shirts right before the toy game because I got soaked in, in pregame warm-up, so I changed the one. I've been wearing that the last. <laughs> I have washed it, though, Bill. <laughs> well, I, I, I guess I'll wash it for Saturday or something. But uh, I wanted to ask you about uh, conference uh, affiliation. I saw something in the newspaper about two weeks ago talking about the Southern Conference and the Ohio Valley Conference. Has there been any progress or? Well, uh, Bill, there, there, there's still kind of some talk and uh, still trying to, I guess, fill each other out. I, I, it just happened I was at UT Martin or when we were at UT Martin talking with Jim Marshall, their head coach before the game. You know, he was telling me that uh, their athletic director, Benny Hollis, was trying to, you know, help us get an OVC and and so it's more things like that. Uh, I know our administration has been in contact with both of those conferences. It's uh, for me to sit here and say that that's going to happen next year or something like that. I think that's a little bit premature. But but our administration, from Dr. Course to Coach Allgood, everybody's aware that we need to get into a conference, and they would all like for us to be in a conference. But at the same time, we want to find the the, the conference that fits our niche the best. And so we're, you know, it's still in the preliminary stages, but, but yes, we are looking and discussing. Would, uh, if we got into a conference, would the basketball and baseball be a consideration, or could they still um, participate in their various conferences? I, I would think probably the first step, Bill, and that's just, you know, a, a guess on my part would not, would be that, uh, you know, for the immediate future, we would stay in the same conference with all the other sports and maybe try to work out, uh, you know, something for a football only, you know, for a while. Okay. Well, good luck, Saturday. Okay. Thanks, Bill. Okay. What are the advantages? Obviously, scheduling takes, uh, you don't have to schedule as much. That's one advantage. What's some advantages and disadvantages with conference tie-in? Well, I think one advantage would be that, uh, you know, you can play for a conference championship. You can go play two or three non-conference games and, uh, and then, you know, still have your conference schedule. Uh, the players can make all conference uh, uh, if they're, you know, performance, and then you can uh, get an automatic bid to the playoffs. You know, if we were yeah. sitting there right now, five and one in the conference, or uh, for instance, uh, you know, they got a big battle in the Southland Conference right now. Some of them are seven and two, eight and one, or and then uh, I think uh, Northwest Louisiana is like six and four, and they're right in the middle of their conference race you know, for an automatic bid. So those are some of the type of things that can come out of it. And plus you start developing some rivals in, yeah. in your schedule and people get to know who those people are. All right, we'll take a break. We'll come back with more. Here's still got a few minutes left on Touchdown Calls. 
Time for Coach Pete Hurd. I'm Scott Griffin. Stay with us. What's on your mind right now? Finding time to get to the bank shouldn't be. Am South now. It's banking 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Can you imagine having a checking account anywhere else? Come by or call us anytime at 1-800-AMSOUTH to open a relationship checking account. And we'll throw in $100 worth of free stuff. Relationship checking with $100 worth of free stuff from the relationship people, AmSouth Bank. My little girl, she's eight and a half months old. And before she came in this world, I made sure that she's going to be well taken care of. Because if I'm not there with her and something happens, I don't want people wondering, well, what type of insurance does she have? What hospital should I take her to? Take her to the bed. When you choose Blue Cross Blue Shield, no matter where you go, you know you're covered. And when they take care of you, they make sure you have the best. They really do. With most wireless phone services, you can ride around without a care in the world until you try to go out of their calling area. That's when it hits you. That maybe you should have called Bell South Mobility. We give you the largest coverage area in the Southeast. And with our prepaid cellular service, Bell South Mobility gives you even more freedom. Stop by today and ask about our prepaid cellular option. Bell South Mobility. Count on it. A meteor? How close? I'm on my way. Superman! I forgot the kid's Coca-Cola. Excuse me. Thanks, Mom. For super. Another superstition, Hong Kong tailors. You have not lost since you started wearing some of their stuff. And you have a nice tie on tonight. That's right, thanks to Ramesh and Hong Kong tailors. Even my socks. Your I got socks are nice. I'm learning how to dress. He's teaching me how to dress. <laughs> and so I uh, have not lost since uh, I started working with Ramesh. And you're looking better and better and better. Uh, I, they gave me this shirt, so. Uh, we appreciate it. Yes, we do. Ram does a great job. Hong Kong tailors, you might want to visit them with some great clothing. Let's go to Billy. Billy, are you there? Yes. All right, we got like a minute and a half. I want to know why Coach Hurt didn't shave his head this season. Why well, would he do that? Well, he did last year. Did you? Uh, we, we did because, uh, uh, if you remember, uh, Carol McCray, one of oh, our, right. our offensive line coach, uh, had cancer and had lost his hair with uh, chemo treatments, and so we kind of did it in honor of him. And, and thank goodness he's doing a lot better this year. And and we didn't have to, he's got hair, and so we all tried yeah. to keep what little bit we got. Pete, uh, I mean, uh, Billy, Pete and I keep this rather thin in honor of Carol McCray. <laughs> okay, I just yeah. wondered about that. All right. Thank you. Think you believe that? Yeah. You think <laughs> so? I think he bought it. He, uh, he not thinks so. Bad. That's not bad. <laughs> Elon coming in, a wishbone team, very difficult, and uh, wow, you get this one, you're sure of a winning season, it'd be the third in a row, that'd be nice. Well, it would. Uh, you know, that's to me. That's always your first goal is to start with a winning season, and uh, we've got a chance uh, Saturday. We've we've got a little uh, virus going through our players yeah. right now. We got uh, ten of them that were out yesterday from practice. We got two or three more that were sick today. Some of them back, so practicing in the gym. So it'll be a happening on Saturday. I don't know what'll happen, but something will happen. Maybe we can move the game in the gym. We might <laughs> win a three-point outbreak there. Thank you, Coach Shirt. The Bulldogs, five and four. They've won three in a row, folks. They're doing a lot of things nobody else has done in a while. Beating Troy State and Jack State first time in 30 years. Three in a row, going for four in a row. Three straight winning seasons. We'll see. And we'll talk to you again next Wednesday at 7.30 right here on ACN Sports. And don't forget, the game will be on Saturday night at 9 o'clock, Elon and Stanford. For Bob Green, Peter, Scott Griffin saying so long, everybody.
Touchdown Calls has been proudly brought to you by Coca-Cola and the Birmingham Coca-Cola Bottling Company, by AmSouth Bank, the relationship people, by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Alabama, providing health plan benefits to Alabamians for over 60 years, by Bell South Mobility, and by Armstrong Relocation. into Cyber Stadium, everyone. Scott Griffin here with Colin Hutto. Elon College and the Sanford Bulldogs. A little breezy, a little rain. Hey, that's been all right, though. The Bulldogs have two straight wins here at home when it has been damp. It's not as bad as it was the last couple of weeks. So. It's not too bad. The field's in really bad shape, having endured two real rainy games. But it is starting to miss just a little bit. You had the cold weather, which we didn't have in those two previous games, and that could make it interesting. And it makes it interesting for a ball handling team, which is what Elon College is, the Fighting Christians, a wishbone team. Tell us about that. It's not something you see every day. And with the bad weather, Sanford has only had about two or three hours outside, most of their work done in the gym. That's what makes it tough. It's really hard to prepare for a wishbone team. You really don't see it much anymore. And to get a true look in practice is very, very difficult. I know they spend a lot of time going over assignment, who's to take the quarterback, pitch man, and the dive man, but it's really not like seeing it at full speed in a game. So it'll be interesting to see if the folks get in position to make plays. But they're good at three-pointers right now this week. Sanford <laughs> team has worked on that. Let's take a look at some of the keys. Fred Bishop, 97 tackles this year. Number 17, he's the middleman. Why is he important today? Well, he's going to be important on the dive. The fullback is a second leading rusher on the Elon College's team. Uh, so it's going to be important for Fred to step up and take away that dive to make the quarterback either run the ball or pitch it. Lateral movement, a key for him today in getting off blocks. Your other key, John Buchanan, 94 tackles. Now, those guys, obviously, you do the math, almost 200 tackles among themselves, almost 30% of the team's total. He's a safety. He's going to fly up and try to take off pitch men and such, but he's also got to be aware of a pass. This team beat West Carolina last week on a 78-yard touchdown That's pass. That's exactly right. They don't throw a great deal, but what they do have is great play action because they only pass the ball about eight times a game. People start sucking up, especially safeties, and that's very dangerous because you can get beat if you're not cautious about that deep pass. And it's automatic man-to-man -man coverage out there, so Roby and Acklin have to be very aware from the corner spot. Now, for them, talk about Derek Moore, their, number, their quarterback number 10. Uh, he does everything for Elon. He leads them in rushing. Of course, he is the, the leading passer. He is gaining about 118 yards total offense per game. He, he is responsible for 36% of their offense. So the key is going to be to really shut him down on the run and make him have to pass, make him have to pitch the ball. It's the wishbone team today in the cold, damp weather here at Cyber Stadium. The Bulldogs 5-4, and four, a win today guarantee guarantees them a winning season. You better believe that's important to Pete Hearn and the Bulldogs. We'll take a break. We'll come back with the fe festivities and the kickoff here. It's homecoming. Folks, Sanford and Elon, stay with us. You're watching watching ACN Sports. a swing that is breathtakingly simple. Another is wickedly precise. One is a ferocious competitor. Another is an artist. About the only thing they have in common is a love for the game and their Rolex timepieces. Rolex watches from Bromberg's, Birmingham and Montgomery. Where can you get 2.9% financing on 12 different models? 
the big value, big savings event at your Southern Chevy dealers, where we've made buying easier than ever because Chevrolet has just authorized 2.9% financing or $12.50 cash back on S10. That's 2.9 financing or $12.50 cash back on any S10 we've got. But hurry in now if you want to get 2.9 financing on S10, Blazer, Venture, Tracker. So do you think they got it? Oh, yeah, they got it. Welcome in to another overcast, rainy day here at Cybert Stadium. Elon fighting Christians and the Sanford Bulldogs. And the Bulldogs will kick it off here in Homewood. There's the Sanford marching band there, and we're about ready to do that. And Elon College will be in the purple and the white with the gold helmets. Sanford in the Navy with the white helmets and the white pants with the Navy and red stripes. So much like Florida State is with Elon. There's Al Seagraves, the head coach for Elon College out of Piedmont, North Carolina. We're about ready to kick it off. Jared Cook will do the honors from Hoover High School. These two teams have only played once in the history of the football year. And Elon won that one in 1973 here in Birmingham, 33 to 10. We'll get a look at the wishbone. You don't get to see that very often these days of the passing offenses. Cook puts his foot to it, and it is fielded at the 11 by Leach. Leach up to the, the football's loose, and it's fallen on by a Bulldog. Jamel Manis gets the football right off the bat for the Bulldogs, and boy, what a way to start for Sanford as they try to hit. Here's the wave again. Let's see who makes the hit. Garrett is there. Yep. Football's loose, and Manis very aware of the freshman from Homewood. And that's the way you want to start. Elon College comes in with a very potent running offense. They're averaging 280 yards rushing per game and scoring 30 points a game. So Sanford with an early chance to get out ahead. Pete Hurt, the head coach, going for a winning season, third straight year with a young football team. Rackley starts it off with a three wide receiver set. He'll throw it out to Salter, and he has his stuff done to the 23. Salter, go over the starting lineups here. And you see the backs and receivers for Sanford, Jake Rackley, Brewer, and Wright, the true freshman backfield, Pointer and Salter at the wide outs, and Scott Knox starting at tight end. Nine yard gain there. Second and one from the 23. Rackley under center, hands off Cadell Wright, and he'll move forward. He'll move the change, not get much yardage, but he will move the change there. Rackley's hand off to number 33. For the first Cadell down. Wright is good for a Bulldog. And you see the guys that allowed Cadell to get that first down, starting at tackle Aaron Bryant, Billy West, and Ben Stewart, the two seniors at guard and center. Jim Dudley at the other guard, and Philip Duplantis starting at the other tackle. Dudley, the walk-on from Penn State. First down, Sanford. Three wide receiver set, eye formation, handoff. Cadell Wright again, trying to burst in the middle. He might lose a yard over there. The tackle made by Mark Bozeman, 272-pound sophomore. There's their defense. And you see the defense for Elon College, Philip Solomon, Kelly Forrest, Mark Bozeman just making the tackle there, and Jerome Nelson. Second down of 10 for the Bulldogs. Going for a winning season, third straight year. And you see the linebackers for Elon College, Kyle Henshaw, Reggie Ignash, and Stephen Bloodworth. Second down of 10, timeout early. We'll take a break. Rackley doesn't like what he sees. You're watching Sanford Bulldogs football here on ACN Sports.
Welcome back here. It is second and 10. Jake Rackley, the senior out of Camilla High School in Georgia. Brewer on the outside. Rashad Brewer gets his first carry, and he'll get three or four over there, trying to block for him, Aaron Bryant, but the tackle Rackley made on that off. side by Phillip Solomon. Freshman in. There's your secondary. Third down. And starting at secondary, Anthony Leach, Mario Thompson, Antoine Stevenson, and Mendel Dobson. And Philip Solomon knows what he's doing there. That's a, his 45th tackle from the defensive end spot. He is a very active player at that defensive end. Third down at about seven. Bulldogs. Trying to cap the Lions on an early fumble. Jermel Manis on a Brewer now split out. One back is right. Rackley rolls, throws. Brewer a little high for him. If he's six foot, he makes the catch. At five six, the little man had trouble with it. Rackley threw it a little high. And Jake, a lot like Brett Favre, at the first of a game, he gets a little pumped up, Colin, and here he delivers a little high there. You see his release points too high. You're exactly right. Receiver standing wide open. Wouldn't have made the first down. Uh, Antoine Stevenson would have been there to make the play, but you're right, Jake's a little pumped up. That's got to calm his nerves a little bit. Just one hard throw, maybe that'll calm him down. So Cook is on for the 35-yard field goal, kicks it up, and it is good. So the dogs break on top. Cook's second field goal of the year. The freshman from Hoover will take a 30-second break. You're watching Sanford Bulldogs football. Fans here every Sanford football game live on WDJC. Where can you get 2.9% financing on 12 different models? The big value, big savings event at your Southern Chevy dealers. But with 2.9% financing on six Chevy cars. Lumina, Cavalier, Monte Carlo, Camaro, Prism, and Metro. And 2.9% on six Chevy trucks. Blazer, S10, Tracker, Venture Minivan, Astro Van, and G-Van. But hurry, because 2.9% financing won't last long. So do you think they got it? Oh, yeah, they got it. 35, Jerry. There's the band here for homecoming. Sanford on top, three to nothing. 35-yard field goal by Jared Cook. Cook puts his foot to it. The kick is there again, and it is fielded at the seven. Brought out, one hit, still on his feet. Manis got the first hit, but uh, I think Thompson Brings it back to the 27-yard line. Dwayne Thompson, who averages 27 yards a kick, and he gets it right there to that yard line. Here's the starting backfield and skill position for Elon College quarterback Derek Moore, the key to watch today. Sean Ganaway, Darren Bethan, Dwayne Thomas, Travis Whitaker, and James Mabe. Right in. Here comes Elon College. First and 10 out of the bowl. Derek Moore, their leading passer and rusher. They like him to touch the ball. There's the belly play to Thomas, and he is stuffed up there by Bishop and others. We may give him a yard on that play. The handoff number three. And the line for Elon College, Tim Holliday, John Putnam, Chip Brockton, Greg Raines, and Eric Glanen. I think. <laughs> That's a good one. Scott Griffin, Colin Hutto here, second at about nine and a half. Split left is Whitaker. Moore still with the football on the corner, but Taylor grabs a leg, and he can't run without that. He'll stretch forward and get to about the 32-yard line. So four-yard gain there. Bishop and Taylor in on that one. And here's the starting line for Sanford, Lamar Whitaker, Lance Langdale, Colin Horace, and James Taylor. James Taylor's one sack away from becoming the third leading sacker in Sanford history. Probably be tough for him to get it today facing a wishbone team, but he is right up there with the best in Sanford history in sacking the quarterback. Out of Clanton, Alabama. And there are your linebackers, Alvin Garrett, Fred Bishop, and Mark Quince Wilder, all from Central Tuscaloosa. Third down and seven. Not a good down for a wishbone team. Moore drops back, throws it out, wounded duck, and could have been picked off. That looked like a kickoff out of Moore's hand as he was there trying to hit Jerry Wallace, eight, Acklin Jerry on the Wallace, defense, defense there. And if you hold him to third Joe and seven, it'll be a long day for them. And you see the secondary for Sanford, Georgia, Roby, Joe Acklin, Khalif Stamps, and John Buchanan, both Stamps and Buchanan, really going to be counted on heavily against this wishbone team. On to kick is Austin Boone, excuse me, Mark Gould, averaging 37 yards a kick. 
Deep for the Bulldogs, Jerome Russell, the main deep man. Manis and Williams back there as well. Manis has it at the 35. He'll run forward and get about 10 yards there. So Manis doing a nice job. Returning the punt for the as Bulldogs. As he goes 35 yards on Brewer. the punt, 10 yard return. And that was a nifty little return. It looked like Manis really had nothing there and he squirts through to gain a nice Sanford return on the punt of 10, 10 yards. From their own 45. And Sanford's got to feel good about that first defensive stand. That wishbone is just a big mess if you're not used to facing it. There's so many things that can happen. They will lull you to sleep with the dive up the middle, then run the quarterback or pitch man around the end. They did a good job on that stand. Brackley, the quarterback, good field position again for the dogs. Twins left, I formation, knocks the tight end to the right side. Brewer off left guard, running over there behind Duplantis and Dudley, the quick side of the field, and uh, he'll get two or three. True freshman walk on out of Lee High School, the leading rusher on this team, and this is a guy with 400 and uh, 90 plus yards this year, 489 I should say. Yet the first three games, he had two carries for no yards. Yeah, he's made up for lost ground in the last six games. Last six games, 491 yards, seven touchdowns, six running, one receiving. Brewer, the pitch, and that's what he can do, get on the corner, and he belies his size with that kind of effort right there, Knox providing some interference, and Brewer from the 48-yard line, he'll get 10 over there to the 42. And you're right, he does belie his size. When he weighed in this summer, they weighed him in at 5'6", 166 pounds. I know he's not 166 pounds this far into the season. He's lost some weight. So to be that small and to be able to run like he does is real impressive. First down, Bulldogs, their second of the game. High formation, twins right, Salter and Pointer, freshman. They'll throw the screen out to Salter. They like to get in his hands. He can run with it. And there he goes there for eight or nine over there. The safety got killed by Jim Dudley. Jim Dudley was down there and just cleaned out the safety. It may have hurt him. And he's not even on my two depth chart. That is Reggie Ignash. It's not going to matter. He's going out. Actually, he's the middle linebacker, I should say. I <laughs> thought it was a safety because he was 30 yards from the ball. He's playing linebacker on skates. Salter got nine on that one, so he's got two catches for 18. Hello, hello, hello. Second and one. Good situation for Roger Carr, the offensive coordinator. Hands off Brewer, left side, tripped up, and uh, may not get anything there. Right. Let's see where they mark the football. They've already moved the chains. First down. So he'll get a yard. And that's a good offensive line, sir. You've seen Elon College putting seven, eight men in the box already. They're going to challenge Sanford to run the ball against them, try to make Jake Rackley put the ball in the air. Thus far, Sanford's offensive line has risen to the challenge, and they're really doing a good job moving those guys out. A damp, cold, breezy homecoming. Sanford going for a winning season. First and 10 for the 32. The option, Rackley can't get away and gets leveled there. Leveled by Kelly Forrest. From Concord, North Carolina, Rackley didn't have a chance from the get-go. No, at he did Who is that sneaking in You see in a there? linebacker blitzing in there. Henshaw. Henshaw, and that's, you know, again, that's what Elon College has really been doing the whole game. They're taking gaps, bringing linebackers, and just challenging Sanford's running game and really trying to make them go to the passing game. I think you'll see it here. Watson's in it tied in. You might see Sanford get the ball in the air, get him at all those blitzes. Second at about 14. And we got a move, movement, I think. I think Billy West got a little anxious. We'll see the indication here. So that'll back him up even more. Dead ball, foul, false start, offense, five-yard penalty, repeat the down. Second and 18. First penalty on Sanford. They averaged six of those a game. But have been pretty clean the last few weeks in that department. Rackley drops back. The screen, sort of a hitch there. 
to Pointer. And Pointer has the catch his eighth of the year, averaging 23 yards a catch. And really has great ability to run after the catch. He has been tentative at times this year, but that time, aggressive running with it, huh, Colin? He really was, but I think he had to make a decision. Uh, he had Kelly Forrest breathing down his neck, and he had to get away from him. But you're right, a lot more confidence in his running right there after the catch. Boy, the snap over Rackley's head. Gets it back, has got a man open, Salter! Rackley just got it and threw a Nolan Ryan fastball to the little man Salter. Boy, what a throw by Jake Rackley. You're exactly right, Jake regains his composure, but Salter, we didn't see it right there. Salter does a good thing, he's running a, a post route. If he keeps running that pass pattern at full speed, he's gonna run into the other safety. I don't know if we can see it on this replay here, but Salter does a good thing. He sits down in an open hole. It's a zone defense. He sits down in the hole, gives Jake a great target to throw to, and you see a great pass and a great catch right there. That's a great play on both ends. So Rackley now four of five for 47 yards. Pitch back Brewer on the outside. Got a good block for Pointer. Trying to sneak down the sideline before he slides out of bounds. Pointer with nice point of attack blocking on the wide out to give him another three or four out there. And totally, he will go from the 12 to the six, so he'll get six on that one. And you are gonna be able to see Pointer's block here. You're absolutely right. It's not a dominating block, but it's good lockup. That defense back really has no chance to come off and make the play until the ball is five or six yards downfield. Second down. And four. Bulldogs lead three to nothing here early in this game. Salter in motion. Pitch back, Brewer, left side, right, trying to provide an appearance. Touchdown! Boy, nice hole over there. On that quick side by Dudley and others. Brewer with the score for six yards out. Very nice hole. He goes in untouched. I don't know if we had the replay there, but Brewer really makes a nice cut to come back inside. Looks like the play was going wide, but there was a gaping hole for him to run through. Rashad Brewer's seventh touchdown of the year, rushing the football. And again, he didn't play hardly at all till the middle of the year, fourth game. Hook is off with the extra point. It is up. It is good. Sanford on top. 10 to nothing. You're watching Sanford Bulldogs football on ACN Sports. Unspoken words. Here it is again, Brewer off the left side, and he could uh, run from here to Homewood. Yeah, he's not touched till he's in the end zone, and that's real impressive when you're that tight to the goal line, uh, and you, the running back doesn't get a hand laid on him until he's in the end zone. That's good, good blocking by that offensive line. Cook will kick off, and how do you figure this game? Bulldogs had about two hours total outside, the rest in a gym, and they look sharp so far. That goes out of bounds, and Jared mad at himself for that, so the Fighting Christians will start on the 35-yard line. But, I mean, how do you figure? Maybe you get a break. You're yeah. not as physical. It's late in the year. Maybe there's a sp spring in their step. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. And also, a lot of times when you do go inside, it's just a lot more concentrated mental work. The play will be resumed at the 35-yard line. First down. But as far as physical contact, these guys hadn't figured out how to block or take on a block or catch and all that. It, it's too late. So the mental work that's done in those kind of practices really is good. Plus, you're right, they get their legs back up under. First and 10 for Elon. There's movement there. Langdale moved, but so did number 52, John Putnam. So they'll back up a little bit. Dead ball foul. Ball start offense. We take it down first and 15. Five yard penalty, still first down. 
first and 15. Football in the middle of the field. Moore will pass. A little loud pattern on the one-on-one -on -one coverage to Whitaker. And he'll go from the 30 to about the 41. So, fourth pass complete to number 88. 11-yard game. And you see something here that Elon is just not used to doing. They, the, as a team, they average throwing the ball eight times a game. So it's really something they're not used to doing, but they make a good gain right there. Second and four. Sanford in the 4-3, but they'll roll up some guys. They'll put eight or nine in the box every time. Fake to the dive. Oh, what an aggressive play there. John Buchanan flying up to make the tackle on Stephen Ferguson. Buchanan really fly it up. Watch this. And that's just what we were talking about before the game. Those strong and free safeties are in charge of running the alley. When that pitch is made, and a definite pitch is made, it's definitely run. It's time for them to come up and make a play. That's something Buchanan will not shy away from, something he knows how to do, and that's make tackles. No gain. Third down and four. Pitch back. That's Bethay on the corner, first down. Bishop giving chase, now he runs out of bounds. That was a mistake by Bethay because it wasn't that heavy a pressure. Lamar Whitaker injured the injured Bulldog. And we'll see if we can see what happened there. There's nothing there. But the pitch man stamps the angle wasn't there. Buchanan misses a tackle. And that's the bad thing about being inside and really not having a, a true good look in practice the scout team does what they can but you know they can't give you the full speed look of running a wishbone like a team who's used to doing it can so that the angles and pursuit angles and things like that are going to have to be worked out during the course of this game so the injured bulldog lamar wicker we'll take a quick break here you're watching sanford bulldogs football while Chris Gillespie and others work on Lamar Whitaker, 10 to nothing, Sanford, 447 to go in the first quarter. We'll be back. Of all the places you'd want your mind to take you, the bank probably isn't one of them. That is, unless they're giving away $100 worth of free stuff. At AmSouth, we are. Come by or call us anytime at 1-800-AMSOUTH to open a relationship checking account. And we'll throw in $100 in freebies. Now why bank anywhere else? Relationship checking with $100 worth of free stuff from the relationship people, AmSouth Bank. All right, here's the replay. Look at the defensive end right here on this end. Lamar Whitaker blocked down right there. His right leg and uh, his own player blocked it to him. I don't know if it's an ankle or a knee. It hit both lower halves. But if you're not putting weight on it, that's not good. And Gillespie and uh, Wayne Kendrick, two of the best, they'll check it out. Whitaker, a playmaker there. Rusty Henry checks in for him from Selma, Alabama. Handoff to the fullback. And he is stuffed inside. And as you said, Colin, earlier, you got to take away that option because you only want to defend two. You don't want to defend three all day. If you take that away, it makes it a heck of a lot easier. It does, and that's the closest option that quarterback has to dive. You've got to get people in position to take on the quarterback. You've got to get people in position to take on the pitch. If you definitely take away that dive, that's one less option for him. He's going to have to take the ball to the perimeter. It's just a lot harder to run. Slot now, broken wishbone. Moore drops back, looking, going deep. He has a man. Touchdown. That's exactly what they can do. Buchanan was back and got turned around. And there's the touchdown to the tight end, James Mabe. 230 pounder got deep behind Buchanan in a hurry. And again, they only throw six, seven times a game, but when they do, it can be effective because you just get sucked up when you're a safety, really anywhere on the field. Well, that's the danger of the free safety is asked to do a lot. And you're right, Buchanan was sucked up right there. That's the first catch by tight end for Elon College this year, but as you can see, it went for long yardage and a touchdown for Elon College. We'll take a look at the replay of that in just a moment. The kicker, Gould, is on. Misses the extra point. 10 to 6. We'll take a break. We'll come back and look at that touchdown in a moment. A lot of scoring in the first quarter here. The Bulldogs still on top, though. Stay with us. Where can you get 2.9% financing on 12 different models? 
the big value, big savings event at your Southern Chevy dealers, where we've made buying easier than ever because Chevrolet has just authorized 2.9% financing or 12.50 cash back on S10. That's 2.9 financing or 12.50 cash back on any S10 we've got. But hurry in now if you want to get 2.9 financing on S10, Blazer, Venture, Tracker. So do you think they got it? Oh yeah, they got it. There it is, Moore. Taylor trying to put pressure, but throws it right on the money. And see, Buchanan gets there, turns around, though. Maybe he walked in easy. Buchanan just got all turned around on that play first. He knows he's beat deep. He tries to get back and make the play, but he's just out of position, and that's a great play by Elon Collins. Unfortunate for Sanford, but again, that's probably the toughest position on the field versus a wishbone. He's playing that free safety. Austin Boone will kick it off. Acklin and Brewer are deep. And for some reason, the air conditioner is on here in the press box. Manus has it at the 10. 15, 20, Jermell cutting through. Nice return. Looks like he knows what he to do with it with a pigskin under his arm. About a 21-yard return for Manus. He's having a career day on return. He had a 10-yard punt return just a minute ago. 20-yard kickoff return. He's going to gain some yardage on the return. Just Lamar Whitaker, they're putting ice on it. It is indeed. And um, we'll have to try to check with Ray Brown, team physician out of Hell South, and see what the, they It's hard to evaluate immediately, but they may know. They're huddling with the doctors right now. Jerome Russell trying to get around in. He's stopped up there. The Nat trying to get on the corner, but a ton of Elon fighting Christians were there. And you're going to see Elon College here again. They are just, they're bringing linebackers. They are blitzing, taking gaps. And again, they're just going to challenge Sanford to go to the pass. It's going to be, it's hard as heck to run against a blitzing, a run blitz defense. And that's what Elon College has been giving Sanford a steady diet of. The Nat getting close to 1,000 career yards. Needs 67 for that run. Now he needs over 70 today. And he gets his second carry. He'll get some yardage over there. Getting close to the 30-yard line. We'll give him two yards on that carry. Third down. It'll be third and 12. And now they put Sanford in a definite passing position, but this far in your own territory is kind of, it's a tough call. Third and 10, you don't know if you want to put the ball in the air, a definite passing down, or you, do you want to run and just hope you get a first down? Cadell Wright checks out here at the last moment. They'll go with James Griffith, the better pass receiver out of the backfield, the junior out of Oak Grove, Mississippi, who hasn't got many reps this week. Rackley will throw it to Griffith. He can run with it. Look at him in the open field. The junior still on his feet, shedding tackler to the 47. So a 23-yard game for James Griffith, who we're used to seeing those kind of plays the last two years, but not this year. And this is a great call again. It's a and it's an iffy down. Do you want to throw the ball downfield, which is what Elon's expecting? They set up a screen beautifully to Griffith, and you're right. He knows absolutely what to do with the football once he catches it. You see him make several nice moves with nice blocking downfield to get the first down and more. 23-yard gain for Griffith. First down, Sanford. Their third of the game. Rackley, he'll throw again. Going deep to Pointer. Beautiful pass, touchdown. That's a beautiful pass. Jake has really had trouble throwing the ball downfield this year, but that is an absolutely beautiful pass. The pointer hit him right in stride. It was great coverage by Elon Collins. They couldn't cover him any tighter. Just an outstanding pass. Great concentration on the catch by Pointer. That's a great pass. Jake's got to feel proud of him. John Pointer. And again, he averages 24 yards a catch. He's 6'1", 180, good size and excellent speed. He's a freshman, too, from Mississippi. Cook is off for of the, oh, it blocked off the right upright, so the missed extra point there. Second to six, John Pointer, another touchdown. We'll take a break, we'll come back. 
You're watching Stanford Bulldog football on ACN Sports. Yeah. Again, Jake Rackley dropping back. Since that first overthrow, he's six for six for 117 yards. That's perfect. That is right on the money, and you're right. He had that one overthrow, got it out of his system, and he is throwing the ball extremely well. That's a difficult pass. That's a great play by, by both those guys, Rackley and Pointer. I really like Jake because he came here, played behind Baryansi, never complained. Wow, what is that? The kick, uh, he just let it fall there. So. They'll touch that back, Thompson. But Jake never complained, waited on his turn, and has come in. He's not spectacular. He's the first to tell you that. But they're winning games with him by letting him do what he can do. He's a fairly nifty runner, throws good enough, and he'll make a play every now and then like that one was beautiful. Well, I agree with you. He's a good leader, too. He's got to have a lot of character to do, as you just said, spend four years backing up a, a good quarterback, and now he's got his chance to play, and he's doing well. First and 10, fighting Christians for the 20. Elon College out of North Carolina, trailing 16 to six, minute 40 to go first quarter. Hand off to the fullback this time, or it may have been the uh, right halfback, Stephen Ferguson. And he scoots over there for some good yardage, about seven for Ferguson. And all those backfield guys, the, the quarterback, the three running backs in the backfield, all know how to run the football, all averaging about five yards a carry. So they know what to do with the football when they get it under their arm. Second and three. Four. A little cross buck action, <laughs> for lack of a better that's term. Exa that's exactly what it was. And uh, Ferguson with a carry again. This time, uh, he'll get, he'll give him two. And we third and a long yard. I had a flashback to Little League. I hadn't seen a cross yeah. putt since Pee Wee Ball. <laughs> but that's exactly what that was, the old cross putt. Not a bad play, sort of like a trap in the backfield or something. It is a little ball fake trap in the backfield. Third and nine. Stanford coming up with a press type defense. And to the fullback, and he'll have the first down. That's Thomas with his third carry. Not getting much there. They're neutralizing it. But he got the first down. He's got three carries for four yards. He is the second leading rusher with 691 yards in the year. And he averages almost six a carry. So they like those quick openers. He's a the prototypical wishbone fullback. Barely over 200 pounds, but hits holes in a hurry. That's exactly right. And you're right. He's averaging 5.9 yards a carry, second leading rusher on the team. And they like it right up the gut. And that's, again, that's the one you've got to stop first. And most folks apparently hadn't been able to do that. First down for Ela. Last play of the first quarter. Moore rolling, pressured by Polson. Still got it. Payne come up and gave a little shot. And he got a flag on it. Wow. He, Richard Kohler didn't like it, let the official know. Sort of a glancing blow, and that's what Richard tried to tell him. Okay, it may have been late, but just a glancing blow. Give him the benefit of the doubt. But they'll add the personal foul on that. There's Richard pleading his case for his linebacker. And I, I think I've got to agree with Coach Kohler on that because it's just a glancing blow. We'll take a look at it in a minute. That's the end of the first quarter. The dogs are good with them. 16 to 6 lead over Elon College. We'll take a break. We'll come back. Where can you get 2.9% financing on 12 different models? The Big Value Big Savings event at your Southern Chevy dealers. With 2.9% financing on six Chevy cars. Lumina, Cavalier, Monte Carlo, Camaro, Prism, and Metro. 
and 2.9% on six Chevy trucks. Blazer, S10, Tracker, Venture Minivan, Astro Van, and G-Van. But hurry, because 2.9% financing won't last long. So do you think they got it? Oh, yeah, they got it. Tell me, my daughters, which of you doth love me most, Goneril? Sir, I love you more than word can wield the matter. Dear, eyesight, space, and liberty. Regan, speak. She comes too short. I find I am alone felicitate in your dear highness love. Now, what shall Cordelia speak? I brought unto you a treasure of Coca-Cola, colder than a witch's extremities. You rule, my fairest daughter. and this is the last play of the first quarter because you can't end on a penalty. There's the handoff to Thomas, more traditional handoff there to the fullback. He'll get three to the 48-yard line. The handoff went to number 23, Wayne Thomas, second down. Here's the blow out of bounds. We disagree on this. You think, I mean, he did hit him out of bounds, but it's just a glancing blow. Maybe you just warned the guy. Watch. Right there. And well, yeah, he was out of bounds. Well, that's like kind of shooting somebody. He's out of bounds. You got to let him go. You know? Second, I mean, I, yeah, I, I agree. I understand. Second and seven. Pitch back on the option. Nice play there, but he's still on his feet. But that's pursuit. You better believe it. Personified. Right there. P squared there. Polson, Jason Long, Lewis Cole, Rusty Henry. Take a look at all the blue jerseys. Well, you see Stamps and Buchanan make a good play there. Then the rest of that defense comes and cleans up, and that is great pursuit. you got six or seven guys making that tackle. Pete Hurt, his defense has not allowed a first-half touchdown against Division I AA opponents in the last seven games until this one. Yep. Third and seven. More on the rollout. Polson. Did not keep outside contained. That's going to hurt him. He got tied up by the blocker, and Whitney knows that the freshman from Mountain Brook and more, you better keep outside containment on that guy. And that's most of the pass plays that you run off a of wishbone. You'll see here they fake the play action, and it's a rollout. This is a run pass option. And you're right, Polson loses contain. Quarterback pulls the ball down and runs for a nice gain and a first down. And he's only quarterback from what we call him. He's really a tailback. Yeah, he's another running back, no question. Four now, three carries for 13 yards, and he has 783 yards on the year. 89 his long play. He can carry, he can go the distance. He can carry the mill. More option, but his pitch man got too far out in front, so he has to keep it, and he's still knifing his way through to the 36-yard line. Eight-yard gain, and his pitch man left him, and he had to keep it. There was no option there. That's exactly right, but you see what can happen if one man goes down. If you had a replay of this, I don't know if he has it. Jason Long has the quarterback on that play. He gets knocked down, and he's unable to make the play. Quarterback pulls it down and makes a nice gain. Now watch his pitch man get way too far out. There he is. You see Long fall down right yeah. there. He, he gets rid of that inside-out relationship, and is unable to make the play. Second and two. Hand off, stuff there. Boy, nice play there. Some strength showed by Travis Satcher, the junior out of Snellville, Georgia, number 92, as he wraps up Ferguson for no game. There's Long there, who's dinged up a bit. Wayne Kendrick checking him out. Maybe he hurt himself when he slipped. He's a freshman out of Tupelo, Mississippi. Hurts a little bit more in the cold, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Third and a yard. Pitch back. Ferguson diving forward. He'll be short again. Diving against his legs was Rusty Henry, who's having to go full bore. He may have to play the rest of the game because of Lamar Whitaker's injury, but he makes a nice play here. He really does, and it's tough to defend that tall sweep when you got a wishbone backfield in there because you have not one but two lead blockers in the backfield running interference for you. Sample made a great play to hold Elon to fourth down and looks like they're going to go for it, fourth and short. 
Eli's seven and three this year, all three losses to Division One AA teams. Let's hope that holds true today. Fourth and about a half a yard. Four under center. Hands off. Boy, I don't, I don't think, think he got it. it. He had to get close to the 34. They're not even going to measure it. Well, oh, okay, they proved it back now. The thing for no game. Watch Garrett and Payne just come stepping right. Oh, that's great linebacker play by Eric Payne. Payne. He doesn't make the initial hit, but he stuffs that lead blocker and allows Garrett to come out, come through and clean that up. That's a great defensive play. Eric Payne inflicted just Woo! that on Buffet. Turnover on downs. The dogs have it. First and 10, good field position, 35. The defense has been very good this year. Option, Rackley, Brewer. He's down the sideline. Pointer got enough of the cornerback for Brewer who made some nifty footwork here. And again, a lot like Barry Sanders, a bit like John Avery of Ole Miss. His feet are so quick. He can run laterally about as well as he can run straight forward. He does, and he doesn't overstride, and he doesn't try to make too nifty a cut, so he's good in this on these wet fields. He's had two nice games against Troy State and against Jacksonville State on real wet fields. That field's still real wet, so he's, he's showing good traction, good running ability to gain that kind of yardage. Brewer now, seven carries for 42 yards. And off, Brewer diving over the left side. He'll get five to the 47 of Elon Collins. Henshaw. Henshaw really stepped up well to take on the lead block of Rashad Brewer. Stay on your feet, my man. Right, really stuffed it in there and makes a nice defensive play. Russell is in now at the tailback. Brewer gets a blow on the sideline. Second and five. Salter in motion. Two wide out to the right side. Hand off. Russell, right tackle. Tries to scoot outside, but drops. He'll get a yard over there, maybe. It's back. 245 pound. He looks like a Division I player. He's got that kind of size and pretty good lateral speed for him. Well, he knows how to run around coming into the game. He had 100, 110 total tackles, and you can see why right there. Jer Jerome Russell, real quick running back, but Ignash makes a great play on him. There's Jerome and Nat from Woodlawn, a sophomore. You put them together along with James Griffin. The tailbacks for Sanford, 214 carries, 927 yards, nine touchdowns in the tailback position. Pretty good. Griffith in motion now as a wideout. Three wide receivers set. Rackley looking, still looking. Escapes one man. He'll run it. He'll have the first. So Rackley, that's the one thing he can do. Escape ability back there from the quarterback position. Jake, again, shows good heads up. He really had nobody to throw to. Watson's out there, really not open. Uh, would have been a bad choice to throw the football downfield, but he just pulls it down and gains five or six yards and gets the first down. And again, you see the mature leadership that he offers his Sanford offense. Those tailbacks for the Bulldogs on the game average, 23 carries, 101 yards and a touchdown. That's pretty good for one position. Last year, Sanford averaged about that per game rushing period. So they're getting that out of the tailback position alone. First and 10. Rackley, play action. Deep down the middle, Watson, a tight end open. 10, 5, only to the one yard line. And he almost scored, did Michael Watson, another great delivery by Rackley. This sure was, and Watson shows great strength right there. And Rackley, I think, got hit late. Yeah. You see the sprint draw, play action, Watson open, wide open, right down the middle of the field. And he drags two Elon College players four or five yards to almost get the touchdown. Watson has been very inactive. The last four games, only four total catches. His first today goes for 39, and if you follow Sanford football, you know he's 6'4", 2'8". On the defense, the penalty will be half the distance to the goal. First down. As the flag on a late hit on Rackley, Watson split out now. They put him at tight end. He has struggled with catching the football for two years. Hand off Cadell Wright. I don't think he got it. Nice low movement there by the Elon College Fighting Christians. And Watson again 
makes excellent catches and then drops easy ones. And that's the frustrating thing about his career so far. Well, and again, he still he still is a sophomore, but you're right. He has dropped a lot of balls that he should have caught, and, and he's caught some he shouldn't have caught. So, you know, it, it averages out, but a coach has to think about that. When you call his number, you know, you got to think about the catches that he's made and the catches that he hasn't made. The football can't get any closer to the end zone without touching it. Second and goal. Right now in a slot, back in motion. They hand off. Brewer, touchdown. Rashad Sales for his second touchdown. And the dogs on top now. 23 to 6. Or 22 to 6. Now you wonder why they wouldn't go for two here to get that point back that they missed a moment ago. The card must say kick. I don't know. Cook is on to do just that. James Carr to hold. Ben Stewart will snap. The freshman from Hoover puts his foot to it, splits the uprights. 23 to 6. The Bulldogs on top. 8.57 to go in the second quarter. You're watching ACN Sports. Of all the places you'd want your mind to take you, the bank probably isn't one of them. That is, unless they're giving away $100 worth of free stuff. At AmSouth, we are. Come by or call us anytime at 1 800 AmSouth to open a relationship checking account. We'll throw in $100 in freebies. Now, why bank anywhere else? Relationship checking with $100 worth of free stuff from the relationship people, AmSouth Bank. Back to the number 23 to 6, Sanford's biggest output in a while. In fact, two more points. It'll be their biggest output of the year. Their most 25 against Troy State. The offense has struggled with young playmakers this year, finding themselves. But today, not a problem. Cook puts his foot to it. This time it is stolen there by Ganaway. Boy, nice hit there to the 30 as Ganaway brings back 20 yards. Buchanan in on that tackle. John Buchanan only needs a handful of tackles to get 100 this year. Bishop leads his team with 97. Buchanan with 94. That's 193 tackles from two guys. And I swear he gets a third of his tackles on kickoffs and punts. Every time we kick the ball, he was making the tackle. Buchanan, 22 tackles alone against Troy State, first and 10. And he's a safety, a free safety. From the 30, they roll the strong safety almost like a linebacker up. That's Mannix. More to pass. The screen overthrows Ferguson. They had it set up pretty nicely. But more missed it. One nice thing to see, the two deep receivers, extremely well covered. Got to be aware of that if you're going to get the wishbone team. And cornerback's another aware position on a defense like this because you must be run support, but you got to be. You just can't fly up without any conscience. That's right. Because of burn. Second and ten. Wishbone for the quarterback. The wide receiver Whitaker to the right. They fake the dive for keeps. Alva Garrett misses it, flags are down. And he'll get Here's nine Harry over there. Four so brought down by Chris Wright and Eric Payne. Payne getting a lot of reps today. Although, in a backup role, he's still the fifth leading tackler on this period. It's illegal motion against the fighting Christians of Elon College, so it'll back him up. Corey Carney checks in for Joe Ackland. Offense, penalty is five yards, repeat the down. Second and 15. Still One of Elon's halfbacks moved before the snap. He didn't move toward the line of scrimmage, so it wasn't a penalty immediately, but he did not get reset for the full second, so that's why the, the flag was late in coming, and they allowed them to run that play. For your information. I'm looking for Fred Bishop. Don't know if he's injured or not, but he's Payne is. right there. All right, no, he's in line. there. All right. No, he's not in. He's on the 32-yard line. Yeah. Line. 
Second and 15. Eric Payne, the junior from, in fact, all six linebackers for Sanford have all made plays this year. All are back. And that's a heck of a group. That's six. We were looking at it before. That's six guys that can fly around and make plays. That's a good linebacker. And course. five of them will be back the year after that. Yep. Second and 15. Moore drops back. Escapes. Nice tackle there. <laughs> good open field tackle. And look who it is. <laughs> it is Lance Langdale. Now let me tell you about Lance Langdale. He had seven tackles going into last week's game. And one sack. Now he has six sacks. Four last week, one today. Six sacks all year. Five in his last five quarters. He's come out of nowhere. Last week's game was maybe some groceries. But I'm going to tell you, he's been getting after that quarterback the last two games. And he struggled to find himself in his career as Moore drops back, going deep. Boy, well, I thought it was caught right at Roby there on the coverage. And Moore misses it. But Langdale, 13 tackles this year. Eight of them are behind the line. That's a good effort, but it's nice to see again. You got a deep receiver with two Sanford defenders back, back there to make the play. Number one, Jerome Russell, number 12, Mike Williams, number 29, Jamel Mattis. Gould is on the punt, his second punt of the day. Thirty-four yards kick the ball. The Bulldogs take over for, for Gould, and the dogs again have great field position. Stafford they might could put this thing out of way against the wishbone team ball with the score here. It's 23 to 6. 7.05 to go in the first half. Well, six more, seven more points really would be nice. Elon College comes into this game averaging 30.6 points per game scoring. So they know how to score with the football, but you're right. Once a team gets down running that wishbone, it's hard to come back. Rackley on the option, pitch back Brewer left side, or is that Griffith? That's Griffith. Griffith in at tailback. He's played some wide receiver, and he'll get a yard over there. He was drugged down by Kyle Henshaw, among others. So Griffith gets a yard. It'll be second and nine. Sanford's trying to make a living off what Elon Collins does, running that option, but running it very effectively. Hey, Colin, Colin. Second and nine, football will be at the 45, far hash bar. Judd Jernigan in now, Richard Smith in. Some backups are in. Phil Duplantis, the right tackle now. Smith getting some playing time. Rackley still looking at plenty of time. Boy, he's got all day to throw it. Finds Griffith over there, his second catch. And Griffith knocked out of bounds. Rackley's pass complete to number 24, James. It's a 13-yard gain, so Griffith now, two catches for 37 yards. He's an excellent receiver out of the backfield. And Rackley delivering it again. He sure is, Jake. Had plenty of time initially to stand back there and look for a receiver. Elon College had everyone covered downfield. Jake gets some pressure, scrambles out and finds his receiver, James gone. Griffith, Clips, wide open. T. Will, you're out of there in the flat. Looking right now. You're gone. 169 yards. Throwing already. Frankly, handoff in the middle. Keenan Ingram, who did not play after the third game last year, got a medical red shirt, injured his ankle this year, played for the first time last week, his second carry of the year. He's out of Oakland High School. He'll get a couple of yards there. I tell you, that's two positions. Sanford is extremely rich in running back and linebacker. They have got some great young talent in those two positions. Second and seven. Three wide receiver set eye formation. Rackley the quarterback. Jernigan is center. Pitch back. Brewer got a hole in the secondary as he goes behind Richard Rackley Smith. Number 28, Rashad Brewer. Game and he'll get by number 98. eight yards there. Keenan Ingram makes a nice block at fullback right there. There's two linebackers attacking, trying to make the play on Rashad Brewer, and Keenan gets a great block. And there he is with some, loves it. Smile on his face, there's turf caught in his helmet. Twins to the left, I formation, Wright and Russell. 
knocks the tight end to the right side against the 4-3 of the Fighting Christians. Russell, right side, got a hole. Boy, he got belted. He got belted by Antoine Stevenson, the strong safety, but not before the net gets eight. Well, he gets shot <laughs> like he got shot, but Sanford makes a nice play. Elon College brought their two inside linebackers, brought them to the outside and stunted them off the ends. Sanford does the thing that they have to do, calls the right play and gets a nice game. So 65 yards for the tailbacks of Salter in motion, handoff Russell, right tackle again, more room again, and the Nat chewing up some yardage himself up to the 17 yard line. Another eight yards there. See Jerome on a little counter play, makes a nice run. Elon again, blitzing linebackers up inside. Sanford accounts for him and allows Jerome Russell to get a first down. That gives Sanford tailbacks a thousand yards this year. That's very good. Come by, that carry right there. First and 10 for the 18. Hand off, Brewer, he's inside. He gets belted again to the 13. Another five-yard gain. Well, you start doing that on first down, it makes this game quite easy. It does. It loosens things up. It loosens up, first of all, the coaches allows them to call plays a little bit easier, but that's just nice gain on first down. If you can get five, six, seven yards, that is outstanding. Second and five. High formation. Pointer and Salter. Hand off Cadell, right? And he may have the first down off the left side. Boy, great point of attack blocking by Bryant, Duplantis, West, and I don't know what's wrong with Duplantis, his name's sort of long, but he doesn't have one on the back of his jersey. That's the he wants to be anonymous. He's the unknown comic. But that's, a, you're right, that's an outstanding offensive line search because Rashad, or excuse me, Cadell gets hit right at the line of scrimmage, but that offensive line is moving the pile and allows him to gain five or six yards. Third down a yard. Power formation, Jim Whaley. Out of S. Davy Hills also in there. They usually hand to Russell out of this play. He goes right side. Russell to the two yard line. Six yard gain for Russell. You see Russell squirt through here, but that's a nice. So look at that offensive line surge. Oh my goodness, that is outstanding offensive line play. That offensive line is really getting after it. And this today. is a defensive line now. The tackles weigh 272, 286. The ends are 237, 230. They're not small. No. By any stretch of the imagination. First and goal from the three. Sanford's eighth first down. Right in motion. Russell gets it. He's stuck this time. Nice defensive play over there by the fighting Christians. Led by Ignash. Yeah, Jerome really didn't have much there that oh. time. That's too many of them, not enough of us. Stevenson, the freshman safety, good size of 6'1, 201 for them. That's not fair for him to hit little Jerome like that. Had I mentioned that the air conditioning is on in the press box? We're going to slaughter a pig later in here. Why is that? How can he make that mistake? It's 40 degrees outside, not counting windshield. 23 to 6. Brewer, stutter steps, trying to get on the outside, can't do it. Stevenson there again, he's active over there. As Brewer will uh, lose a yard. And Stevenson comes into the game as the fourth leading tackler for Elon College. He makes a nice play here to not let Slippery Mr. Brewer get away from him. That's a good defensive play. And Sanford calls timeout. Timeout on the field. We'll keep it here. Bulldogs lead 23 to six. Sanford University Athletics is proud to have Birmingham Coca-Cola Bottling Company as a corporate partner. Coca-Cola's partnership is vital to all areas of the Bulldogs Division I athletics program. Always for the fans, always Coca-Cola. Bill Gray, excellent running backs coach, graduate of Mississippi College, over there when they won a national championship. And I think on that coaching staff that came here twice to beat Sanford as a Division II school. No wonder Peter had hired him. Well, we got a lot of folks hailing from Mississippi College. Chris Gillespie, the head trainer. That's where Peter heard. Heard. played Peter. baseball and football. That's right, a lot of guys. Nice little Baptist school over there. Jackson, Mississippi. 
Three coaches talking to one player. <laughs> He's going to have all the low down. Third down and goal. James Griffith now, the fullback with Cadell Wright, the tailback. They'll split now, though. Griffith in the slot along with Salter. Now in motion. Brackley rolling. Watson's wide open. Catches a touchdown. That's what we're talking about. A bullet. Brackley sort of threw it a little harder than he had to. And Watson, sticky hands, caught that one. Well, that's a great play by Sanford Brackley rolling left. He has really four options. He has three receivers over there to throw to. Uh, he had Jerome, excuse me, James Griffith shallow in the end zone. Watson deep in the end zone. He had someone crossing across the middle, and he has the option to run. So I, I'm not sure who that was, but outstanding play. Cook is on for the extra point to make it 30 to 6. It is up. It is good. We'll take a break. 46 seconds to go in the half. The Bulldogs on top, 30 to six, their biggest output already all year. We'll be back. One has a swing that is breathtakingly simple. Another is wickedly precise. One is a ferocious competitor. Another is an artist. About the only thing they have in common is a love for the game and their Rolex timepieces. Rolex watches from Bromberg's, Birmingham and Montgomery. Here's the touchdown again, Jake Rackley to Michael Watson who has two catches today. Went upstairs to get it. That's as many catches he's had the last four games. Catch on a very well designed play. Jake has a lot of options on that play. He found the open option. He gets the ball to Watson at six. Cook is set to kick it off. 46 seconds to go. 30 to six, Sanford on top. Coming up at the half, Colin Hutto will visit with some old dogs. Can you teach old dogs new tricks? No, you can't, as a matter of fact. Cook kicks it. Thompson loses it. Picks it up. Falling down. Doesn't know where he is. Drop. That's no man's land down there. Stamps and Gab uh, Gable on the play. Thomas from Magnolia, North Carolina. Sweet Magnolia. 14. 39 seconds to go in the first half. Scott Griffin, Colin Hutto here on ACN Sports with the Sanford Bulldogs. We're glad you're with us. Bulldogs going for a winning season. Third straight year. They can pull it off. They're on their way with a 24-point lead. First and 10. Moore rolling. Again, outside contained, not there. He's got plenty of room. He's out of bounds at the 28. Derek Moore keeps the ball. He's one out of bounds. Again, Thomas is a bridge. mentioned earlier. He has one first down, extremely long run. His longest gain of the year is 94-yard run against East Tennessee State University. So he knows what to do with the football, and he is a threat to go all the way at any time. Fourth first down for Elon College. First attempt for the 28. Sanford playing a bit soft, as you would imagine, with 31 seconds to go. Again, not the position a wishbone team wants to be in. Pressure from Taylor. There goes Moore again, running again. And he's got another positive gain. Nine yards to the 36. You can just see his discomfort trying to stand back in a pocket. He really doesn't know what to do with the football. As soon as he's hitting his last step, he's not looking for a receiver. He's hitting that last step and running with the football. So you can see that he's out of his element trying to drop back and throw the ball. He has 37 yards rushing, but the backs only have 23. Sanford has held their last two opponents to under 100 yards rushing. Moore might destroy that, his escapability back there. Second and two. Drops back. This time throws it up for grabs and knocked down. Carney was there on the play. 
Wallace almost knocked that down himself. Carney had a better chance of catching that than Wallace did. Wallace turned into the defender there and knocked the ball away from Carney and allowed him to get the interception. We'll see here. Third down. He's just defending. Wallace yeah. is. That's that's a good defensive play by the wide receiver. Third down and two with 16 seconds to go in the first half. Dogs on top, 30 to six. Corey Carney, Jr. out of Murfreesboro, Tennessee, right there. Derek Moore, the quarterback. Drops back. Taylor almost got it, but again, boy, he can run forever. Moore, oh, another good block there. He's still in bounds. Nice play on that side by Roby to keep Moore in bounds. Four seconds to go. First down. I'm glad Rusty Henry looked up because he had a nasty block coming his way. He doesn't get his eyes around downfield. Timeout, Elon. Elon with a timeout. No replay. You'll see Taylor lose outside contain. He could have had his sack that moved him into third place. Watch the block here on Henry. He does look up. Thank goodness. Fortunate for him right there. <laughs> and gets met. Well, if he doesn't get ready for that, he gets his clock clean. But a good tackle by Roby and Wright to keep him in bounds and force him to use a timeout. Yep. So one more play. Four seconds to go. Whether your next move is for your home or office, let Armstrong Relocation handle the job. Professional, safe, courteous service with tremendous attention to detail is what set Ar sets Armstrong Relocation apart from the others in the moving industry. Armstrong, Re Armstrong Relocation is a proud corporate partner of Sanford Athletics. Need to work on that reading. Though. As Pat Dye would say, you get better and better. Well, I read to my daughter every night. 30 to 6, 4 seconds to go. Three wide receivers to the left. They'll throw up the uh, jump ball here. If he can. Throws it downfield. It's caught. Whitaker has it. He scores. Oh, the referee got knocked down. Let's see. It is a touchdown. How about that? Derek How about a 47-yard touchdown for to Whitaker? Well, you hate to see that. Rusty Henry almost gets a sack. It's a short wobbler. It's a dying duck. Wide receiver makes a nice run. Gets to the sideline. Has a block downfield. I couldn't tell who that was. Making the block. 83. Omar Curry makes a good block to spring the wide receiver in for the touchdown. So Moore, with only 404 yards passing all year, got 108 already. Two of them on long plays. One to that man for the touchdown. So Peter will not be happy about that. Two touchdowns in the first half. His team had not given up any in the last seven games. Flags on the play in the first half to Division I AA teams. Elon in the transition period of going to Division I AA. They will decline the penalty for Sanford. It's against Elon, and that'll be the first half. That is over. It's a half. 30 to 12 is your score at the half. With the band getting ready to put on a performance here for the homecoming crowd. And the crowd in a lively mood with an 18-point lead. 30 to 12, Sanford over Elon College. Stay with us, folks. You're watching ACN Sports. All the places you'd want your mind to take you. The bank probably isn't one of them. That is, unless they're giving away $100 worth of free stuff. At AmSouth, we are. Come by or call us anytime at 1 800 AmSouth to open a relationship checking account and we'll throw in $100 in freebies. Now, why bank anywhere else? Relationship checking with $100 worth of free stuff from the relationship people, AmSouth Bank. A meteor? How close? I'm on my way. Superman! Superman! I forgot the kid's Coca-Cola. Excuse me. Thanks, Mom. You're super.
Welcome back to Sanford football on ACN Sports. It's halftime of Sanford homecoming. Sanford leads Elon College 30 to 12. Halftime this week, we're going to be joined by a couple of former players here at Sanford University. First, first we're joined by Lou Sample. Lou Sample played here uh, as center from 1986 to 1989. He was in that transitional period. Lou, tell us a little bit about what it was like going from Division Three non-scholarship to playing 1AA football. Well, Colin, as you know, being a former player, uh, you know, that transition time was a really important time for Sanford. And, uh, you know, the players that we recruited and, and got to come in to play were just talent-wise a whole lot better than us uh, old Division Three guys. Um, but at the same time, I think the Division Three uh, team formed the foundation for the uh, initial 1AA group uh, and, and kind of the older guys kind of led the new guys uh, into what college football was all about. I'll agree with you. My senior year was our last year of Division Three, and I think most folks don't know we had a nine and one season mm -hmm. that year so we did have some, some, some success to build on you think that was a key and oh yeah yeah i think that was definitely a key coach bowden's motivation and uh and his uh his desire to win was was a big key in all that well tell us a little bit about what you're doing now since you left sanford what have you been through <laughs> in your life well i've been for the last seven years i've been a professional student uh i went through dental school and then did a orthodontic residency and so i've just uh, begun practice in vestavia hills how's that going oh it's going real well going real well really enjoying it well, it's nice to be out earning a living now yes, instead of yes paying it bills, is isn't yes it, it is yes oh. it is oh very good well lou i thank you for joining us here at halftime and folks i want you to take a look and what a Division Three athlete looks like standing exactly. next to me. We're going to bring in a guy that was a part of our first signing class here at Sanford when we did move to 1AA. We'll take a break here on ACN Sports and be back to visit with Bobo Locke in just a few minutes. Welcome back to halftime at Sanford Elon College. Again, Sanford leading the score, leading the game 30 to 12. And now I'm joined by Bobo Locke. First of all, you can tell the difference in size. He's a bit bigger, a bit thicker. He yeah. was was that scholarship athlete. But Bobo was a, a part of a special group. He was part of our first signing class here at Sanford. Uh, we signed 15 kids to scholarship our first year at 1AA. And Bobo, tell us what it was like coming in as a true freshman being forced into action. Uh, it was very difficult. You know, the adjustment from high school to college, especially Division 1AA, uh, uh, you had to do a lot of growing up real early and real fast. I guarantee right. you. And you were a guy that really liked the weight room. You, you put on a lot of size when you got here. You loved to work out when you, when you came to Sanford, but you gained a lot of size and strength, and I know you owe a lot of that to Coach Stroud. I know that, that oh, he meant yes, a lot I, to you. Oh, yes. I enjoy um, working out with Coach Stroud, and I learned a lot from him. And because coming in as a, as a freshman um, right out of college is tough, you, you know, um, 
especially playing Jacksonville State, Nickel State, those guys there that have five and, and four-year starters. That's right. They, it is a different breed. Let me ask you this. Your first two years here at Sanford were kind of tough. Uh, not a lot of wins. I was yeah. coaching here then, so I understand I what was going on. But your last two years, tell us about those and the satisfaction you had going to playoffs. Uh, the playoff was the biggest thrill probably that um, I could ever hope for um, making it to the semifinals. And I wish we could have went on to the finals. But um, the playoff probably was the tip of the iceberg. It, it's kind of made those first two years a little easier to um, endure. Yeah. That's why. Well, it's got to give you pride to look back on what you were a part of building a program going from, you know, from non-scholarship football to, to playoff oh, yes, caliber. Going from having tents for, um, for a um, press spot to the million dollar press spot <laughs> it is today. That, that's a nice change. Well, Bobo, tell us what you've been doing since you graduated from Sanford. Well, I'm coaching in um, Andalusia, my hometown at the high school. I'm coaching in football and I'm the offense coordinator and I'm coaching girls basketball also. Well, how's that going? Girls basketball, what's that like? Uh, uh, that's a big thrill, and I'm enjoying it. And I'm hoping that we can make it to Birmingham this year and be playing at the sixth in the state finals. Oh, that's right. You have to give me a call if you make it. Right. Well, folks, we've been joined by Bobo, and Bobo, I appreciate your time. We're going to take a break here on ACN Sports. Again, halftime, Sanford Elon College with Sanford leading 30-12. to 12. Welcome back to halftime here. The Bulldogs enjoying it. 30 to 12 here. Jake Rankley having a career first half. There are the numbers. Sanford leading in first downs. Rushing yard is fairly close. But Rankley, 9 of 10 for 172 yards. Elon with only three completions for their 108 yards, including two long touchdowns of 59 and 49. And not many turnovers in the game as well, but the point differential, 18. This is the quarter that the Bulldogs have had trouble the last two years. Did a little math in my head. The last two years, Sanford has been outscored 156 to 23 in the third quarter. This year, 87 to 7. So 156 points in two years have given up in the third quarter and only scored 23. Why? I don't know. Pete Hurst can't figure it out. He's harped on it. He's talked about it. But it doesn't matter. There's the kick as Stanford will receive here in the start of the third. Manis at the 16. His third return of the game. 
on his feet to the 28. That'll go for 12 yards for Jamil Manis, the true freshman from Homewood. And Sanford will start it off directly. Brewer, right, freshman in the backfield, freshman at wide receiver. Seniors flank them at quarterback and tight end. First and 10, Jake Rackley. I believe his all-time best, if you want to double-check me, this year. Passing yardage was 199. We'll check that. Three wide receiver set eye formation. Watson to the right. Option. Rackley still has it. Gets by one man. He'll fall forward to the 34. Nifty running by Jake as he gets six yards on, on that down. outside. There your lineman, Bryant West, Stuart Dudley Duplantis. A couple of freshmen, senior, and a couple of juniors. Second and four from the 34. Solomon, Forrest, Bozeman, and Nelson. Two tackles are 270 plus. Jake's best, oh yes, that's right, he went nuts against Nickel State, I forgot about that, 290 yards, so he's got a lot of way to go. He drops back now to add to that. On second and long, this time, misses Salter deep, good coverage on that side. By Mario Thompson, Henshaw, Ignash, Bloodworth. Rackley, his only his second incompletion of the day, he's nine of 11. Leach. Dobson, Stevenson, Thompson. Stevenson's been very active in the first half from a strong safety position. Brewer and Wright check out now on third and four. James Griffith in the backfield along with Jerome Russell. They'll slot Rackley in the shotgun. Everybody going deep. Jake's got a man wide open. Salter, catchable right through his hands. Jake throws up his hands like, well, I know he's 5'8", but Salter should have had that one over there. Yeah, he should. That ball hits him right in the hands. It's a nice pass by Jake. Lack of concentration or whatever. He just misses the ball. That's a nice pass by Jake. First punt of the day for Mario Brian Holmes. He's been freezing on the sidelines. He wants to just get in. I swear. He don't want a DNP by his name. Beautiful snap by Stewart. There's the high kick. Thompson to receive at the 22. Got it forward, knocks down his own man on the corner. Slips down at the 42, 20 yard return though. Mario Johnson. 44 yard punt for home. And you are right about the punter wanting to get out there and kick. I'm gonna tell you brother, standing down there on the sideline at halftime, it is getting cold. There's your offense for the Fighting Christians. Derek Moore. 100 yards throwing, 56 running. That's about typical for his year. He is the man they like to tote the free. First and 10 from the 40. Near hash mark against the Sanford 4-3. Moore option, pitches in a hurry. But they on the corner, Roby loses contain. He's out out there. And he's got 10 yards, does Buffet. And there's a lineman for uh, Elon College, Holiday, Putnam, Brogdon, Reigns, and Jelani. Corners cannot come in like that. You've got to make sure they cut inside where pursuit is. There's your defense. Whitaker is not in. Rusty Henry starting for him this half. Whitaker out with a knee problem. We don't know. Did you check on the severity of that at the half? Uh, missed that. Uh, Henry will get all the reps here in the second half. They might throw a Jason Daly in there every now and then. Garrett, Bishop, Wilder, among the finest you'll find at Division I AA, and they're all from the same high school. In fact, Central High School guys responsible for 31% of the tackles. Roby, Ackland, Stamps, Buchanan, excellent secondary. First and 10, split receivers now, no tight end, wishbone. To oh, Colin Horace sacked Moore on the option run. He got there in a hurry. He shed his block, and the sophomore from Mobile was in there in a hurry. Look at there. He sure did. That's just good pursuit down the line of scrimmage. That's what a good defensive lineman will do when the play is going away. He'll run straight down the line of scrimmage where he has some chance of making the play. You see Colin make a nice tackle right there. Second 
second and 11 from the 49. Moore, full back inside. No, he's still got it. He's gone. Forget about it. What trickery and fakery by Moore. And he goes 51 yards. And Pete Hurt shaking his head at this. You stop him, you stop him, you stop him. Three big plays, Kellen. And they got three touchdowns. And that's the danger of the wishbone. Coming into the game, Moore's longest run was for 97, 98 yards. You see a nice run right there of about 50 for a score. And that's the danger of the wishbone. You can defense it, you can defense it, you can defense it. Somebody falls asleep or gets blocked, and it can go for a big play. And that's the problem with the wishbone. On for the kick is Austin Boone to make it 30 to 19. Boy, and now the score right before the half looms big, and here's a score early. It is good. Somehow that that was a spiral. That thing <laughs> scooted through, and he kicks like he looks like a nose guard. We'll take a break. We'll come back with more after this. Where can you get 2.9% financing on 12 different models? The Big Value Big Savings event at your Southern Chevy dealers. But with 2.9% financing on six Chevy cars. Lumina, Cavalier, Monte Carlo, Camaro, Prism, and Metro. And 2.9% on six Chevy trucks. Blazer, S10, Tracker, Venture Minivan, Astro Van, and G-Van. But hurry, because 2.9% financing won't last long. So do you think they got it? Oh, yeah, they got it. Here's the touchdown again, Moore. There's the pull, and boy, he faked us off. Bishop made the tackle, but the problem is, Thomas don't have the football. The quarterback's down the sidelines by now, and he's gone. You see the reaction there. Moore has touched the ball 17 times, 10 passes, excuse me, 10 rushes, seven passes. 13 of those rush of touches have gone for 51 yards. Four of those touches have gone for 163 yards. He now has 106 rushing, 108 throwing, three long plays, 55-yard touchdown run, 59-yard touchdown pass, and a 49-yard touchdown pass. Now, this isn't productive at all. There is Brewer coming. Well, I say that. There he is getting on the outside. So Brewer gets on the outside to the 30. As his speed gets, I didn't think he was going to be able to run away from him. He sure did. Good return by Brewer. Watson checks in, and it's 30 to 19 now. And again, a wishbone team hard to come back, but if they make big plays like that, anybody can come back. Well, they have the big play ability. You look at the long plays of all these running backs to touch the ball, and they're all 70 yards plus, so they have the big play capability. Rackley to Griff, excuse me, Russell, off right tackle, Jerome busting through there. He's got 15 yards on the carry. And that's what Sanford needs to do is answer these big plays and big runs like this. This is a nice hole, lead block by your offensive line. The fullback, Jerome, makes a nice run right up the gut. Just short of the 45-yard line for the nap. He's at tailback, Cadell Wright, the Fayette County freshman at fullback. And off Russell. Little counter, Dudley misses his man, Russell didn't need it. He's down the sideline. The net to the 23 yard line. Two yard game for Russell. And this shows you the character of this Sanford offense has really started developing. They are answering a big play with a big drive. Jerome gets around the corner there for a nice game. Just barely catch. And with that run, Jerome Russell, 1,000 career yards. Very good. Come on! So Jerome up there in his sophomore season already a thousand career yards congratulations to him and he was a cornerback a year and a half ago brewer on the outside he'll be spun down for a loss knifing in there mark bozeman for the defensive tackle position brewer will lose four right. just to let you know jerome crossing a thousand yards needs to get to a thousand twenty three yards to become the 13th leading rusher in sanford history a thousand what? Twenty-three. John Harper sits at number thirteen with a thousand twenty-two yards. He's real close to Jeff Price, 
uh, for his career. Jeff had 1,039 yards. All right, so he needs 23 yards to be on the charts, I guess. Yeah, and he's not far. James Griff is sitting at 11th with 1,166. So Jerome's getting close to some very good company. Second down, 14. Twins left. Oh, what a play. Brewer on the end of round. Flags are down. Brewer out of bounds. Beautiful call by Roger Carr as it goes from the 27. Oh, let's go, to let's the let's seven. Go. Over here, right there. Maybe motion. That was a gorgeous call and a gorgeous play. Beautiful ball handling by Jake Rackley. That's the old Statue of Liberty play. The end. Jake drops back, acts like he throws the ball and hands the ball to the end, coming around. But you got holding against Sanford. Offense. Ten yard penalty. Repeat the down. Second down. Here it is again. Watch the beautiful setup. Brewer in motion. Right there. And Brewer's off to the races, but the hold brings it back. And that is great ball handling by Jake. So they're now in the 36th. They've got to get to the 13th. Second and 23. Russell in motion now. Everybody's standing up. Rackley shotgun. Takes to Russell. Sets up the screen. Go, Watson on, is there. On, Another beautiful call. Watson on the outside. Oh. Flips down. Boy, two beautiful plays, but more flags are down. That'll go for 13. And we'll see what this is about. Aaron Bryant upset. He says it's motion. Hey, Aaron. And Pete Hurt with a sense of urgency. You can hear him on the sideline cameras. They're talking to Rackley. That was strange because everybody was set, but they called a legal motion, and he's explaining to Salter what happened. Offense, five-yard penalty, repeat second down. This is where I wish they'd call the number. They don't in college football, but this way you would know. A little bit there on the left tackle. That ain't it. Well, he moved a bit early, if that is it. Well, we'll they, see. They need to call it yeah, that's true. That wouldn't be, really that wouldn't be motion. Uh, so I, don't, I don't know what... Don't Everybody know what was called. set, so it would be hard to be a legal motion. It was, yeah, it wasn't a legal shift. Unless somebody was going forward, leaning or something. Anyway, I don't know. second and too long to even talk about. Rackley, looking around. Too high for Griffith. He's nailed in the back by Henshaw. Rackley's pass is 10 inch number 24. Griffith. So Rackley, number three, um, 9 of 12 now under 72 yards. Still having a great game. I mean, he's made, oh, some, great, right. made some great passes. Some, out, some absolutely outstanding throws. And some very good catches. I mean, it's been on both ends. Watson with a big catch for a touch. Salter makes a big catch. It's been a good offensive day for Sanford. Third and 28. What do you call on this play? Play the game. How many third and 28s out there? Rackley will roll. He's got Salter open. Didn't see him. Still buying time. He's going deep to Pointer. He's behind the second. Oh, he drops it. John Pointer dropped it. Rackley. Oh, my. Jake was directing him. You see him like a point guard. Tell him to go deep. Go deep. They don't realize that if Pointer did, and he threw it there. Watch him. Watch him just start directing traffic here. Well, Jake sees a rusher out of the corner of his eye. Thank goodness. He rolls around and points him down. Saying go. <laughs> Say get down there. Oh, my goodness. Boy, you wake up tomorrow morning hating yourself for missing that. Jake did everything hey, to catch on, we heard him. John with two catches for 52 yards and a touchdown already. Could have touchdown number two. Oh, Stewart. Oh, Thompson didn't want any part of Ben Stewart coming out of a 250 locomotive. He said, see, I'm going to my knees. I don't blame him. No, if he doesn't get down there, he'll be a greasy spot on that field. 30 to 19, Sanford on top, 10, 13 to go here in the third quarter. The fighting Christian's doing just that, trailing by only 11. Here they come. Wishbone team hanging in there with three big plays for touchdowns. 50 plus, all of them. Boy, look at the splits they had on that. Moore 
keeps it, and he'll get to the 15-yard line. If we can see that Derek again. Moore keeps the ball on the Look at the splits the lineman at. Colin Boris. Second down. Goodness gracious. Look at the guard that's and the five, tackles. That's a five-foot split. That spreads you out and gets you some running lanes. Well, that's the thing. I, you got to think Sanford's going to, if they keep lining up in those gaps, they hadn't been all game. But you got to think those defensive linemen for Sanford will start taking them. Maybe the widest I've ever seen. That was what? Second and seven. Roseanne could run through those. <laughs> Moore on the rollout, and you see him, he just tucks it immediately. But James Taylor has it. Derek now, will that count as a sack? Tackled by number 15, James Taylor. No, he's not attempting to pass the football. He's running the option down the line of scrimmage. There's a big difference. Well, they look like he might want to throw it. <laughs> It'd be interesting to see what they score it. That is not a sack. He looked like he might want to throw it. What are you, mind reader now? <laughs> well, let's look at him here. There's no pitch back. Well, I take that back. I laugh at you. I laugh incorrectly. We'll call it a sack. And that'll move him into third place all time past Chad Moblin. It will. 15 sacks. You scoff at me. I did scoff. Seven that. sacks for Taylor on the year. Moore throws it to nobody. So Moore only three of eight, but 108 yards. Fourth down. I thought he was just running the option. Why would you laugh at me like that? Well, look at you. Gould was on the kick. Russell is deep. He's flanked by Mitch Williams and Jermel Manis, who has three returns already this year. There's another kick. Russell will get this one at the 48. Drops it. He got hit immediately. This is, could be a big turnover. Let's see. They've got it. The fighting Christians have it. Shenard Smith, a freshman out of Augusta, Georgia. Pete Hurts way out on the field. And he wants, I think, well, I think he had plenty of room to catch it, don't you? I don't think he was violating that two-yard cushion. I think that's what Pete's questioning. If we can see it one more time on the replay, I think that's what Pete is questioning. It's, it's off the right if he was violating it. But he, I think Coach Hurts heard that Let's see it again. It's a two-yard cushion that they have, the defenders have. No, yeah. he's not within that. Not, not enough to. Yeah. Pete's still arcing his case, but he won't win that. Moore. That's who, Russell with that catch, but it won't count. That's bad. Moore just threw it away, I think. Yeah. Now, had he been tackled on that play, that would have been a sack. Yes. Third and nine. Yes. You, I For think sure. they're going to, when we see the. I think you're right. Yeah. Second and 10 from the 50. 30 to 19. We've got a football game here. 8.33 to go in the third quarter. Sanford could use a stop here. Jason Long in at linebacker, the backup. They're just rotating fresh bodies. More option. But they got it. He's got seven or eight over there. Tackle by Buchanan. More pitch to number 28. But they a 516 yards plus coming in. 5.4 average. Again, gaudy averages for this team. Thomas 5.9 at fullback. Ganaway 4.9 left halfback. The right halfback, but they 5.4. The quarterback 5.0 in the averages. Yeah, and all the guys, that, like you say, all the guys that are touching the ball are five yards plus on average, so they, they can really run the football. Third and two. Moore gets hit by Taylor, has to pitch it. Ferguson with a nice block. He's in their secondary. Wilder missed him. And now Elon playing some pumped up football Ferguson. here. They really are. You see the reverse option there. James Taylor takes away the option good for the quarterback. For but unfortunately, there's good lead blocking at the point of attack. Elon gets a nice gain. And you can see that offense really starting to move the football. In the first half, Sanford really had Elon's number. We're doing quite quite well except for a couple of big plays but you're starting to see that wishbone really start to click first down Ela timeout Time out. 30 to 19 we'll take a break the Bulldogs on top by 11 but Elon is marching here on homecoming with 727 to go in the third we'll be back 
tell me, my daughters, which of you doth love me most, Goneril? Sir, I love you more than word can wield the matter. Dearer than eyesight, space, and liberty. Regan, speak. She comes too short. I find I am alone felicitate in your dear highness love. Now, what shall Cordelia speak? I brought unto you a treasure of Coca-Cola, colder than a witch's extremities. You rule my fairest daughter. Just a setting as you'll find in college football. Except that, that is the rain and cold here. 30 to 19, Sanford on top, 7.27 to go third quarter. First and 10, Elon. There's that split again with the guards and tackles, you see. Hand off, full back, and that's what it does. Opens up, gaps, touchdown right there. Chris Bryant, the backup with the score. That was wide open, you're right. Elon takes a big gap, takes a big split, pull back right up the gut. You see why he's a second leading rusher on this Elon College team coming into today's game. Well, no, that's not, that's the backup. He had, Brian has eight yards all year. He's got a bunch more now. He goes for 35 on that one, but it was the fullback. Yeah, and that's what Coach Hurt said in the interview he had in the paper. He said the big thing about the wishbone is you can stop it for 60 plays. It was those five or six big plays that they can get that can get them right back in the game. And well, you're the, seeing that come true right here. And now Sanford with that mixed extra point where they could have gone for two a moment ago and they did not. This could make it a three-point game. More stop. So that negates that. As Bishop makes the tackle on Moore. The ball on the two-point conversion attempt. 30 to 25 now. Well, Sanford has scored more points than they have all year. They're also in danger of giving up the second most points that they have all year after another score. Here is the replay. It looked like it was open there for a moment, but Bishop closes quickly, plays off his block. Yeah. And Elon's getting close to its season average of 30.6 points a game. Sanford really needs to, to get some points on the board here and spread this game out. This is way too tight for homecoming, but you know, Coach Hurt knew coming into this game that before the season, Elon College looked like a good homecoming scheduled team, but they have played beyond and above what was expected of them this year. They've got a good football team. Seven and three, and the wishbone even makes it that much more difficult. And again, about two, two and a half hours total all week in practice outside. Most of it done in the gym, where you can't get a lot done. And also, a virus spread through the Sanford team all week. Basically every day, nine to 10 different guys would miss practice. They're, they're okay now, but a lot of them miss work even in the gym. So a bit rusty, except offensively, the Bulldogs are good, but defensively, sort of the, the gear reversed here. Normally defensive looks strong and the offense struggles. Joe Ackley cuts in front of Brewer, steals it away, he'll get to the 23. That's where Sanford will begin. Their second possession of the second half. And Elon's got some life over there. They're jumping up and down, and I don't think it's to stay warm. I think it's because they're uh, in this football game. They're excited. They got a chance to be 8-3 and three this year and beat their third 1AA opponent of the year. So they, they have a lot of reason to keep fighting and win this football game. First and 10 Bulldogs. Rackley, the quarterback, has gone the whole way. Watson to the right. Salter, pointer to the left. Brewer, left tackle, closed quickly. Bryant up there trying to block three guys, it looked like. Rack Tackles made by some fresh Christians there. 94, Brian Fortson of sophomore to Wendell, North Carolina, getting dirty. No gain for Brewer. And that was just a good defensive play. They, Elon College had three guys in the backfield. There was no chance for Brewer. Brewer now 14 carries, 58 yards. Play action, Rackley throws, wide open is right. At the 28, still going forward, Cadell. Up to the 39 yard line, 16 yard gain for Cadell Wright as he gets 
Rackley pass complete to number 33. Okay. And this is a good job by Cadell. The, the tendency is just to run out of bounds. You see him plant and get upfield to get those extra yards, get the first down and move the chains. Cadell's fifth catch of the year. First and 10. From the 39. Handoff, counter, Brewer, right side, a little dance, a little juke. Hey, he did well to get a yard on that play as he's tackled at the 40, just across the 40. The handoff on the 28 is Scott Brewer. Philip Solomon in the line tackle. Brewer, a little juke. Second down. Second down. You mentioned Barry Fred Sanders. Fred Astaire move. Yeah, that's a Barry Sanders type run. He can make 75 moves just to gain two yards, but a play that should have been made for a loss, he gets a positive yardage out of it. Second and eight. Football just crossed the 40. Screen to Salter. 40, nice cut there. He'll get close to a first down. To the 42-yard line, That's he'll be two yards shut. And Sanford's done Start quite well on this play today, about the fifth time they've run it. And Salter's gained good yardage every single time they run it. Looks like it's Cadell Wright time, third and short. I'd like to see him up the gut again. Well, Sanford wide receivers had caught 10 total catches the last four games. They've got eight today. You like to get to those guys. Third and two, right in motion. Brackley, pitch back, Brewer, stop. Excellent play. The pitch to number 28, that is Scott Brewer. Mario Thompson at 165 pounds, Fourth about down. the same size as Brewer. And he makes a nice open field tackle. Boy, he really does. This is a great attack on the pitch. Brewer never had a chance to get around the corner. That's just a great defensive play by Elon College. So Sanford reeling a bit here. And the third quarter continues to haunt them. 4.15 to go in the third. Holmes a low line driving kick. Bounds at the 31. And it'll roll dead at the 12. The 43-yard kick for home. The third quarter again, the last two years. 169 points scored against. Sanford has scored 23. This year alone, 100 points to seven. Those aren't good numbers. That third quarter has been the nemesis, eh? And that's in 10 games, so the opponents are averaging getting 10 points a quarter in the third. Yep. Handoff, Thomas, oh. smack down, flag flying, looks where a holding could be. Bishop got the second hit. I don't know who had the first hit, maybe. Langdale, uh, I believe. Langdale with a nice play there, number seven, and there's the hole. Preliminary indication is holding. If it was holding, it wasn't too good a job. <laughs> what? If you hold, you'd at least like to have a hole somewhere to run. Sanford to back him up a little bit, get some field position back, I would think. We'll see. Offense, half the distance to the goal, three piece first down. And that's what they'll do. They'll the move it to the six yard line. Still no, actually ran to his own man. Langdale didn't pinch in there. Bishop got the next hit. That's the Gray family. Bill Gray has too many kids to even count. <laughs> He needs an abacus to keep up with the number of children he has. His wife's smiling because all those kids come in handy on a cold day. Just gather them around <laughs> mom. First and 15. <laughs> Moore drops back, looking deep. George Roby with a pick. He's got room to run. Well, like a Keystone cop, he ran. 58 yards to get eight, but that's all right. He's to the 27. Roby with the interception. And Roby had good coverage there. He was not fooled. Nobody's behind him. He is all over the wide receiver. And you see Roby make a nice break on the ball. The ball's a bit underthrown. He makes a nice pick. He goes to the wide side of the field trying to get some yardage. He does gain a few yards, but that's the kind of play Sanford needed. This game is within five points. They needed a big turnover, and we need to get some points out of this. And you can tell as a defensive back because he's carrying the ball in his right hand running left. <laughs> That's all right, though. First and ten. Sanford with seven picks in their last three to four games. They had one 
for six games of this year. Fake reverse. Oh, Salter was wide over. Rackley will run it. He's down the sideline. Jake Rackley from the 27 to the 12. Salter was wide open on that play, but Jake just didn't feel comfortable throwing it. Yeah, I don't. Jake's had some heat. He couldn't really un uncork the ball. It makes a good play pulling it down and running it there. But I've got to tell you, Jake has had an outstanding game, not only throwing the ball, but his ball handling has been yes. very, has been exceptional. He just had some very nice play. That play right there. That was great play. And the most underrated probably part of being a quarterback is ball handling. You can freeze the defense if you're good at it. Boomer Esaias is perhaps the best I've ever seen. Rackley throws it out. Salter is there. Jukes one man. Salter to the three. And you say, why would they throw that play? Because there's a defender out there on block. But you take your chance with a Salter one-on-one, -on -one, and you saw what happened there. You make one man miss, you go for positive yards. That's exactly right. And it's getting the ball on the corner quick. You see right here, Jake just raises up and pops out to Salter. Salter does make that defender miss. And now he's going to gain six or seven yards after the miss. There's no one there to clean up after that defender makes, makes a missed tackle. Salter now five catches, career high for him, 56 yards. Well, I should uh, take that back. He had five catches for 94 yards against Nickel State a few weeks back. Rackley now 11 for 14 for 187 yards. That's already his third best game of the season. 290 over, against Nichols, 199 against Tennessee Tech. Over 1,400 yards for Jake throwing this year. Handoff, Brewer stuffed in the middle. He might get a yard up there on second and two. Rackley's handoff on number 28 with John Brewer. He stopped on number 29. Well, this is setting up to be an exciting fourth quarter. Sanford could score only their second touchdown all year in the third quarter here. 2.48 to go in the third quarter. They've been outscored this quarter, 13 to nothing. For the year, 100 to 7. It's 30 to 25 in this game. Hand off, right, touchdown. So they touchdown. score for the second time all year. And very important that they answer. I think they'll go for two. That makes it 36-25, an 11-point differential. We'll see. They want the football on the left hash mark. Or the left side, I should say. Now Ben Stewart now moves it right to the middle of the field, they say. As they can place it wherever they want on the field. 36-25. 2 point conversion coming up 233 to go in the third Watson will split left Knox the tight end will split off the line three backs now they shift Griffith is in there and Salter as well Rackley rolling right throw back Dude, wide open touchdown or I should say two point conversion to Scott Knox who has only his Break. 38 25. <laughs> Sanford on top. We'll be back. What's racing through your mind right now? Finding time to get to the bank shouldn't be. Am South now. It's banking whenever it's convenient for you. So come by or call us anytime at 1 800 Am South to open a relationship checking account and we'll throw in $100 worth of free stuff. Now, can you imagine banking anywhere else? Relationship checking with $100 worth of free stuff from the relationship people at Am South Bank. There's Rackley just getting it off with enough arm strength to get it there before the defender knocks with his fifth catch of the year. Senior from Tuscaloosa County, Cook kicks it out of bounds again. And Jared is very mad at himself over that. Freshman from Hoover who has come in and solidified this kicking game as a field goal today. 
Yes, he does. First points of the game, 35 yards. That's good to see. He came in and kicked the field goal a couple of weeks ago. Uh, a huge extra point and a big field goal. And they was at the Jacksonville State game. Kickoff out of bounds. Colby putting play on the 35-yard line. First and down. Elon takes over first and 10. First and down, first and says the official. That's a new signal. First and 10 from the 35. <laughs> Wishbone. He stopped by number 38, John Buchanan. And another strange split on the right side of the line, which forces the defense a little bit wider to that side of the field, and they run the other way. Eight-yard game for Bethay. And you're starting to see Elon College really getting nice blocks on the corners. Sanford's defenders are playing them off in the first half. Now they're starting to get chopped down a little bit, and you see, them, see Elon gain more yardage on that option. 166 yards rushing for Elon. They average well over 200. There's another run. First and down number from the 43. About a 10-yard gain there. And that was your cross buck again. Worked very effectively that time. The first time they ran it didn't work too well. But that gained about 10 yards. And you're right, Elon College averaging 280 yards rushing. And they are starting to rack the, the total up. I don't know what they're up to now. 176. Yep. 106 by Thomas, the quarterback, or more, I should say. Thomas is the fullback. He's only got six. He's the second leading rusher. Handoff again. Ferguson this time breaks in, still in there to the 34. Good blocking downfield, Babe, there. Making it tackle number 17, Fred Bishop. First down, Elon. 12 yard gain there. Very nifty run. Ferguson comes into the game averaging 4.8 yards per carry and there's a nice do rag Jason Long with a toque on <laughs> him and Dr. Brown he's got a ankle taped over there he may be through for the day Thomas or excuse me Moore still with the ball pitches late that's another thing about the Ashram. You got to keep your pitch man in perspective the whole way. And that's good discipline by Bethay. Why well, he just keeps his distance. They get another four or five out of that. Well, I'm going to tell you, that's a big play by Derek Moore to have the confidence and the peace of mind to pitch that ball when you're about to get drilled. But I can remember as a little kid watching Alabama run that. Trivia that. question, who gets that carry in yardage? Hmm, probably the running back. That's right, although but, uh, Moore took it eight of the 10. To the 25, Moore pitches, but they, he's got, oh, loose football, out of bounds. But he'll get another five over there, and suddenly but they becoming the favorite here, and he's got nine carries for 59 yards for Eli. And but they, no stranger to running the football, he comes in to this game is the third leading rusher for Elon College at 516 yards, averaging almost five and a half yards a carry. And you saw Alvin Garrett there in good base position, but he didn't attack or play. Oh, so they move it back a couple of yards from the fumble. I guess they're saying he wasn't a fumble, that the ground can't cause a fumble. It looked like it was loose before. Break for Sanford, second and seven. Very long developing run there. Sanford looking a little weary. Rusty Henry getting a slow made that tackle on Ferguson. But he's had to go. He probably gets in 15 plays a game. He may have been in 40 so far. Yeah, he's taking a lot more snaps today due to the injury than he normally does. And it just gets tiring. I mean, you're chasing that quarterback. It's like rushing the quarterback. 38-25 at the end of the third quarter. A weary Bulldog team will come try to catch a blow. They're up by 13. Here, homecoming. Elon College on the drive, though. You're watching Sanford Bulldog football on ACS Sports. Where can you get 2.9% financing on 12 different models? That big value, big savings event at your Southern Chevy dealers, where we've made buying easier than ever because Chevrolet has just authorized 2.9% financing or $12.50 cash back on S10. That's 2.9% financing or $12.50 cash back on any S10 we've got. But hurry in now if you want to get 2.9% financing on S10, Blazer, Venture, Tracker. 
So do you think they got it? Oh, yeah, they got it. One has a swing that is breathtakingly simple. Another is wickedly precise. One is a ferocious competitor. Another is an artist. About the only thing they have in common is a love for the game and their Rolex timepieces. Rolex watches from Bromberg's, Birmingham and Montgomery. Third down and five from the 20. Pitch back, first down. Touchdown! No, he stepped out of bounds. Stepped out of bounds at the five, did Bethay. But he'll have 15 yards on that carry. And I'm gonna tell you who set that up is Steven Ferguson. Watch him on the end. What a great block he makes right there on Roby to spring that play. That's a great offensive play. That's a great block. So Bethay, 10 carries, 72 yards of Pete Hurt. A look at disgust. But he doesn't know what he can do. It's like putting your fingers in a dike here. First and five. More rolling. And he's sacked by Taylor. Now, he, that's definitely a sack, but I will give him two now for the day. James Taylor rolling right now. And that gives him 16 sacks for his career. Two more, and he'll pass Bubba Brister for second all-time. The junior from Clanton, Alabama, James Taylor. We call him Sweet Baby. Sweet baby James. That's but he's really more like a steamroller. Thank you. That's the one I like better. That's a great play. I mean, he knows how to pursue that quarterback. He can play it, get after it. More pitches. Ferguson on the outside. Nice shoestring tackle over there by Bishop. Yeah, just to let you know, Brister Packer is second on the list with 18 sacks. And Ollie Sanders leads in sacks on his grip with 23. And Taylor had 14 coming in, mm -hmm. or 13, 13 and a half. I don't know, I think he had 14. I think he's up to eight now this season. Yeah. Yes, eight this season. If that first one was considered a sack. I'm sure it will. I mean, we are at home, right? <laughs> Third and five. Third goal, actually. Fourth, lofts it. Touchdown. Right over Joe Agler. They just lofted it up to Whitaker at 6-4. Same size as Watson. And Joe never had a chance over there at 5-11. No, Joe tried to do everything he could. It might have even interfered, but that's a great pass. Especially from a guy that just doesn't throw the ball very much. That's a great touch pass. So, two touchdowns now for Moore. He had only two all year throwing. He's got that many here. Austin Boone on for the extra point. It is up. Oh, almost blocked by Williams. Nice try there. But it's 38 to 32. We'll take a break. We'll come back. The fourth quarter is hot. Stay with us. You're watching ACN Sports. Unspoken words. the touchdown again just to drop back throw it to the 6-4 Whitaker and he got it over Joe Ackland he did that's not a pass you expect a wishbone quarterback to make because that is a very finesse pass it requires a lot of touch but he makes a nice pass up and over for the six and we need to get a shot of this action the head coach has the defense gathered around him on the right side of the field Pete Hurt gathering his defense around them. Brewer has it at the 13. To the 20. He's got room. 25. Oh, the last man make the tackle did. Mario Thompson stops Brewer at the 33. There is a flag down. 35, I should say. There's Pete Hurt. I don't know if he's praying or going over to the defense there. They're drawing stuff on the chart. I think Richard Kohler. Normally, Richard gathers the defense around him. 
But Pete's over there. Want to add his input to it. He is the defensive coordinator. And again, this Guard, is a football team. Face mask on the kicking team. Five yards and a first down. Five yard face mask with Stanford at the 40. Well, they're fighting for a winning season. But Stanford this, needs to win yeah. this game. I mean, this is a defense that's given up uh, only about on the average a couple of touchdowns a game to most of the Division I AA opponents. And they give it up 32 right now. That's right. Twins to the left, eye formation. Knocks the tight end to right side. Rackley, ball fake inside, pitches out. Brewer, he's got a block on the corner, sneaks out there. And he'll go for seven to the 48-yard line. We'll give him eight. He's he is a slippery little man. Oh, he's a good running back. And number 17 carries, 66 yards for Second Brewer. Down. And good seal off block there by OS. It sure was. And you see Sanford making a good living off that option. You expected Elon to run it. Sanford has run it some this year. But they have done extremely well on that option. Brewer around the corner has been real productive for Sanford well, it, today. It's been better with Brewer there. And that shows you where talent helps out your scheme. Oh, yeah. As opposed to another guy. Second and two handoff. Russell, he's got the first down inside Elon territory to the 49-yard line. Jerome Russell on the carry. Three-yard carry for Russell. He's got 10 carries for 70 yards now. So the tailback first position down, today for Sanders, or for Sanford, I should say, 133 yards on 27 carries. Again, their average for the year, 21 carries, 101 yards, and a touchdown. So better than their average so far. And again, over 1,000 yards career for Jerome Russell in this game and 1,000 yards for the year from the tailback position. For the Bulldogs, Rackley drops back. He's got Griffith open right off his fingertips. Boy, Jake has been on target all day, and he didn't Rackley's miss by an index finger on that one to Griffith. And I think that's where Griffith's inexperience at wide receiver showed right there. You'll see the pass. Jake could not place it any better. A linebacker covering uh, Griffiths. You love that it. matchup. And James could not get his hands on it. Well, I know he's kicking himself for missing that ball. It's a nice pass by Jake. Griffiths with two catches for 37 yards. Go, Rex, he has 13 on the air. Rackley on the option. Nifty running by Jake on second and 10. Snuck in behind the pursuit, ran against the grain there. Rackley like an edge of sketch he's trying to get out of there. And Jake, he'll get eight yards. And he makes a good run there. It looked shut down. The pitch was not there. He saw it. He makes a smart decision, tucks the ball down, and gets up field. Jake with 31 yards rushing, 187 passing. He added up 218 total offense for Rackley. The senior from Georgia, Camilla, Georgia, Mitchell Baker High School. Won two state championships there. And again, married in the offseason, met his wife on a computer. The internet couple. I just, I can't get over that. I'm sorry, I'm not used to that. Third and three, Rackley play action. Dropped. First sack of the day comes at a big time. Jerome Newsom for Elon College. Sanford had been terrific on third downs all day. They've been horrible all year, but they didn't make it there. Brewer late to pick up the pursuit. Mess Nelson's seventh sack. He came into the game with six. So he is in the backfield quite a bit, making sacks on opposing quarterbacks. Holmes on to kick for only the second time from the 48. Bounds. Oh, man, is that going to be? Oh. oh, it just sneaks in the end zone. He deadened it perfectly, but that putt just went a little long. Ben Stewart does not quite pass enough to get down there to down that ball, and that was almost a picture-perfect golf corner punt. Holmes' third kick, watch this. It deadens nicely there, and you just wishing for it to get to the left of that cone, but makes a U-turn there and goes right in the end zone. That's when he wished the dang thing was round, where it would roll out of bounds. First and 10 at the 20, 38-32 Elon, only six points behind here at homecoming. Hand off. Oh, what a hit. 
and it's still on his feet. That's Bethay. And that wild buck finally knocked down by Alvin Garrett, but that was Corey Carney from his cornerback position who came up and belted Bethay, but Bethay kept going. And Payne is, oh, that's a nice shot. I don't know how he's got, Payne and Carney. I don't know how he got away from those guys, but that is an incredible shot. All that for one yard. He got hit like that, and he's looking at his knuckles, seeing if it's bleeding. <laughs> Second and nine for the 21. You'd think blood was coming out somewhere after that shot. Elon College, they don't run the offense of Florida State, but they look like him, and the scoreboard looks like him with 32 points. Moore tucked in behind his blockers there and got about three on that side. Lewis Colin on the tackle. Also, Eric Payne, who's been very active today. The Derek junior from Vicksburg battling Derek like a Derek Civil Derek War Derek veteran, which is a lot of what his hometown's Derek about. Derek. More slow to get up. And that's a play you hadn't seen Elon College run. You're used to seeing the wishbone teams fake that dive to the fullback, let that fullback act as a lead block, and the quarterback follows in behind, but that was a nice game for them. Third down, more. Throws it out, wobbly pass. Misses his intended target. Omar Curry, Omar Curry a freshman from Burlington, North Carolina. So Sanford holds there. Good news for Pete Hurt and the coordinator. And that is a, you could tell a it, dying duck. It looked like a wishbone quarterback there. Russell Deep. Gould on to punt. From the 25. 42-yard kick, Russell has it, drop. Eight-yard return for Russell. Change of possession. The Bulldogs have it at the 41. 38-32, 9-41 to go in the game. Sanford Athletics is proud to have AmSouth Bank as a sponsor of this year's television broadcast. Over the years, AmSouth and Sanford Athletics have maintained a solid relationship, for which we are grateful. But then relationships are what AmSouth Bank is all about. See how a relationship with AmSouth Bank can be beneficial for you. First and 10. Twins to the left, Salter and Pointer knocks the tight end to the right, I formation. They throw it out, Salter again. May have been an audible, Salter rolling. Topsy-turvy run there for Terry Salter. And he's got his sixth catch, a career high now. And he's got six yards on the play. And that's just too good a play to get away from. It's gaining very good positive yards, six, seven yards every time Sanford runs it. Second and four from the 47. And Sanford needs to put some first downs together here, run some of this time off the clock. Leading by six, they need to do something with the ball. Second and four, Rackley still has it. Jake just seems, it's like he knows where the chains are. Keeps it, the safe play, but knows he can get the first down and does. First down, Bulldogs. Seven-yard game for Rackley. And you're right, you can tell Elon practices against the Wishbone team all during the summer. They are all over the pitch. The pitch has just not been there. It wasn't on that play. But Jake does make the smart play, pull the ball down and get the first down. First and 10 inside the Fighting Christians territory at the 46 near hatch mark. Pro set. Brewer dipping outside. Runs into somebody. Who is that? That is Kelly Forrest. Wake up, And Pete upset over something. See what he might be upset over. Somebody was getting after Salter. They slung him down. I think it's a free safety. Salter was blocking him and just threw him to the ground. And Pete's upset about that. Second. At seven. Brewer, 18 carries, 69 yards. Rackley, this time too high for Salter. Boy, that's close to lateral. Rackley's pass intended for number 25, Terry Salter. 
third down. Say. About a yard in front of him. With him yeah, knocking it back, I guess that's what made it look like so much like a lateral. Jake hurried that one a bit. Yeah. This is a big down. Sanford needs to get this first down. Jake, 12 out of 17 unofficially, 193 yards. Third and seven. Field is spread for Rackley out of the shotgun. He'll pull the trigger. Got his man. Brewer. Football loose. Picked up by Elon. So a 12-yard gain, but a fumble. Fumbles is recovered by number 21, Anthony Lee. Pete Hurt can't believe it. I can't either. The fighting Christians take over first and Strip tackle there by Ignat. And boy, that hurts. That puts that Sanford defense in a bind. And they're up against it. Sanford's only up by six points. They cannot allow Elon to get anything going here offensively. First and ten. Moore out of the wishbone. Drops back. Pitches now. Fresh pair of legs in there. The pit, Sean Gannaway, junior out of High Point, North Carolina. And number 90, Lewis Cole. Second Lewis down. Cole on the tackle. Four yard gain. Our director is yawning. <laughs> I can't believe he'd yawn in this kind of game, which is what surprised me. <laughs> Hey, that guy works 90, 100 hours a week. Second and six. He may be laughing at that. He may work more than that. There's another pitch to Ganaway. Stuck down there. He's close to a first down, but Carney came up strong from the cornerback position at Ganaway. Speaking of ball handling, Elon handles the ball extremely well right there. I thought the fullback had the ball. I'm watching him as he runs upfield, and then the ball's on the, on the edge right there. That's great ball handling by Elon, but good pursuit, like you said, by Carney on the on the corner. Third and a yard for the 35. He hurt. He just looks disgusting. Still got the lead by six, though. 38-32 Sanford. 6.22 to go in this game. Moore with a little pivot action. Pirouetted and then snuck through for the first down. Four-yard gain for Moore. And now 15 carries for 109 yards for more. And, you know, when you're the best athlete on the field for your team, you're going to get a lot of touches. He has 26 of those plays himself. Well, what's impressive, he's a leading rusher on the team. Even though he's lost 170 yards being sacked, he's wow. still the leading rusher on this team. With 783. Moore, hands off, Ferguson for two. And I just can't get out of my head, Vegas Ferguson from Notre Dame when he's got it. Vegas is a little bit bigger than that guy, but he was number six and was a good running back as well. That Ferguson, eight, catch, eight carries for 33 yards tonight. Second and eight from the 42. Over the shoulder of the coordinator. Wishbone offense, 5.24 to go. Moore. Still got a football loose. I think Sanford has it. Let's see. John Buchanan with a fumble recovery. Pete Hurt's happy about that. He gets a big play from a guy that's made a ton of them all year. John Buchanan, the junior, over 100 tackles. Watch this. This is Corey Carney causing the play right there. He causes a, the turnover. He hits a quarterback, turns him end over end. John Buchanan there to make the fumble recovery. That's the big play that this Sanford defense needed. So only the second turnover all day for Elon. Bad timing for them. 5-10 to go. Now Roger Carr, the offensive coordinator for the Dogs, would love to keep this and throw a score in there. Hand off. Cadell Wright, it's in the secondary. He's to the 24-yard line. Look at Aaron Bryant He's all fired up. up. He is fired up. There's nothing better for offensive linemen. You see him on the lead there. 
And there's nothing better for an offensive lineman than to see a big run by your fullback right up the gut. There he is. And Aaron Brown is fired up. That's not the tomahawk chop. That's the first down indication that Aaron's <laughs> celebrating. First and 10 for the 23. Right now with 23 yards rushing. They hand to him again. He'll get to the 20. Tailback in high school was Cadell. Six carries, 27 yards for him. Again, the best player I hear on that state championship team. Some of the camera guys up on top of Bashinsky Fieldhouse. Cook warming up. With James Carr holding. Or I should say Holmes holding for him over there. Second and seven. Hand off. Russell inside. And he'll get three to the 17 yard line. Russell with 11 carries for 73 yards. Third down and three. Well, should Sanford not get this first down, a field goal is gonna come up huge. Cook has got to be ready to kick this thing through. That'll make it where Elon has to score twice. It'll put it to a nine point game and Elon would have to score twice. Football at the 17, 342 and counting. 38-32 Sanford over Ela. Been a tougher homecoming than they wanted. Brewer over the right side. That's the confidence Carr has in this offensive line, coached by Carol McRae, and they're dominating right now as Brewer goes from the 17 to the 12. You're absolutely right. You see that surge again by the offensive line. Great blocking in there by Bryant and those guys, and that's a, that's a good play for Sanford to get the first down. 147 yards now and counting from the tailback position for the dogs today. First and 10. Pointer and Salter to the left from the 12 yard line. 311 and counting. Elon's got to gamble a bit now. They hand to Cadell right. He'll try the right side and he gets dragged down there. Flag down. Could be a face max. When you got a wild Bronco like Cadell Wright running through there, and again, it reminds me so much of Roger Craig, the former back with Nebraska in the 49ers. You grab on anything you can. Sometimes that's against the rules. <laughs> that's exactly right. And you're yeah. well, he really didn't get a face mask. Well, we'll take it. Yeah, he just sort of got his hand real high. He didn't really grab the face mask. Be interested to see if they call it just the five-yard variety. Face mask on the defense. We'll repeat the down, first down. Sanford gets a break here, because watch, his hand gets high. Just, boy, just, yeah. you know, not really a face mask there, but I can see why he would call it a black glove on a dark, and his head went backwards. But uh, we'll take that oh, yeah. break to the seven now. First and five. Call anything you want here, I think. Pointer to the right, Salter the slot to the right. High formation, option wide side. Russell caught. Not nothing happened there. He'll lose a couple. And Elon's going to start burning their timeouts now. It's the only choice they have. This will bring them down to one timeout remaining in the game, but they have got to stop this clock. We'll take a break. 2.24 to go. Sanford trying to ice this thing. 38-32. We'll be back in one minute. Timeout, Elon. Of all the places you'd want your mind to take you, the bank probably isn't one of them. That is, unless they're giving away $100 worth of free stuff. At AmSouth, we are. Come by or call us anytime at 1-800-AMSAL to open a relationship checking account. And we'll throw in $100 in freebies. Now why bank anywhere else? Relationship checking with $100 worth of free stuff. From the relationship people, AmSouth Bank. Elon College cheerleaders haven't given up. Their team hasn't either. They're only trading by six. 224 to go in the fourth, but Sanford second and eight from the 10. 
I'm not so sure I wouldn't be jumping around if I'm not those cheerleaders, as cold <laughs> as it is. If I was out there in shorts, I'd be doing some kind of jig out there, trying to stay warm. 38-32. Sanford getting the play from Roger Carr in the press box through Bill Gray. And we'll see what they call here. Brackley does have two touchdown passes in this game. 205 yards throwing. Pete saying yes, I know we got one more timeout left. Or they've only burned one. Anyway, the handoff to Brewer, he stopped. They just ran a lead play there, and he was nailed immediately by Mark Bozeman. So they called timeout to set this up, and it didn't go anywhere. Now, Bozeman is all over this. He plays off his block and drills Brewer in the backfield. He really didn't have a chance at all. A rare missed block for Aaron Bryant, another timeout on the field. That might would have gone for big yards, but Bryant lost his footing, and Bozeman knocked it down. Health Partners of Alabama is proud of his association with Sanford University and the Bulldogs athletic program. Over the years, Health Partners has grown to become the HMO of choice for thousands of people around the Southeast. You don't need a health plan, you need a health partner. Health Partners of Alabama. That's the coaching staff for the Fighting Christians. Clock is stopped at 2.26. Elon out of timeouts now. Sanford has three. Judd Jernigan getting the reps here late. Third and nine. They hand off. Cadell Wright bust through touchdown. How about that hole? On third and 11, Cadell Wright ends this game with a quick burst up the middle. Wow. That's huge. That's just an outstanding job by that offensive line, if we can see it again. So they just absolutely ripped the gaping hole right up the gut on that Elon defense. And that's clutch. That's just putting the game away, like you said. That's, that's what you expect out of that offensive line that has been developing and coming on and playing much better football. Jared Cook on for the extra point. James Carr to hold. Ben Stewart to snap. Timeout Sanford. Timeout Sanford. And they may be discussing going for two here. I think Pete wanted to think about it. Just in case with 2.22 to go. Here's the replay again. Watch the point of attack blocking. Billy West looking to move the guys back two or three yards. And Wright got there so quickly. The safety came up. But the first hit didn't come to the one-yard line. They were on the 11. Well, Billy West absolutely roasts his man. He drives him off the line of scrimmage, puts him on his back, and that's easy to run behind when you got blocking like that. Billy wanted to be a doctor here. And uh, he's from New Orleans, senior leader of the offensive line. So Pete Hurt says, I'm going for two. Forget this. 4-32 with 2.22 to go. And as quick as Elon College has struck, it may not be a bad idea. Two gets you a two-touchdown lead. That's right. One only gets you a 13-point lead, and they're not kicking any field goals. You know? No, sir. Not at all. Looking for agreement over here, a little sport. I was just thinking, I was in deep thought just then a couple months ago. First and go. It's the extra point attempt. Griffith is in on the slot right there. Watson and Salter, all kind of moving. Rackley, rolling. Got several options. Throws to Salter. Got it. Man, he threaded the needle there. He picked the one that was least open. That's how hot Rackley is. 14 out of 19, 208 yards, two touchdowns and a two-point conversion. Jake rolls out here. Watson standing in the back of the end zone all by himself. Griffith open. What a great play. We'll take a break. We'll come back. 46-32. Sanford on top. <laughs>
Florida has scored 46 points. East Tennessee State's number 15 in America. They only scored 35 on Elon College. Liberty scored 41. Furman scored 38. Sanford has rolled up 46 today. Very impressive Very offensive impressive. performance, and they've needed it since the defense has had trouble stopping about five plays, it seems like, but five scoring plays. Cook set the kick, 222 to go, 46-32 Sanford. Squib kick, and that'll roll out of bounds. To the 35. He didn't like that either. Jarrett's had three kicks. Elon will take over first and ten. Jarrett's had three kicks go out of bounds. It's very uncharacteristic for him. And he's mad at himself. First and ten. A wishbone offense having a pass now. Taylor giving oh. Chase Payne almost had a pick. Board pass is knocked down, down, down number six, six, Eric, Eric Payne. Payne. Payne, an emotional linebacker. Fun to watch, isn't he? He really is, and that's, that's what you expect out of those inside guys. You expect emotion. You know, those guys are just crazy, and they ought to be. I mean, they play a crazy position. They got to be hitters. Payne certainly knows how to hit. And he almost picks it off there. Elon trying to set up a screen, and Payne is all over. Second and 10. Sanford in the 4-3. Moore dropping back, sacked again. Taylor with his third sack of the game. 17 for his career. There he is again, Colin Harris helping out. He just needs one more to tie, be tied to the second leading sacker in Sanford history. Hand off, oh, Lance Langdale. Uh, his 15th yeah, tackle of the year. Now he starts to show boat and have a little fun. 15th <laughs> tackle of the year, nine of them behind the line. Boy, that is a perfect form tackle there. Yes, it is. Elon Ford. You know, and it may be just last week. That's all he needed to get confidence to show that he could play this game. Oh, because Dick, Dick Hillman, he had a good game last week. He's playing well again today. Fourth and 20. They got to go for it here. They throw it up. Oh, my. Thatcher caught that football. And he's down at the 19. Derek pass complete, number 88. Well, that's great adjustment on the ball. Or Whitaker, I should say. First down, Elon. Can you believe that? No, nope, that's... You see, great adjustment. Sanford has good coverage on it. Carney's all over him. But great adjustment by the wide receiver to come back inside and make the catch. Moore. Rolling, still got it. Fumble, oh. fumble, covered up by John Buchanan, his second fumble recovery. So Elon wanted to have fun with it, 51 seconds to go, but Moore drops the goods and Buchanan the thief. Looked like Rusty Henry caused the fumble there, Buchanan. And let's see that. Pick. Let's see that again. I'm sorry, Colin, but yes, let's sir. see it again. If we can, you'll see the perfect way to cover a fumble. Tell them about it. You curl up. You put the ball in your belly. You don't land on it on top of it. You curl up, like you say, put yeah. one leg over the top of it. Everybody practices that. You see a good recovery. You rarely see it, though. Yeah. Most, Most guys try to pick it up, but much less fall on it. Well, he's aware of the clock. He's aware of the game. Brackley will just get it in there. Now we got uh, some extracurricular activity going. They can't stop the clock. The fighting Christians are trying to fight. Living up to their name there. He'll go out of the game. <laughs> well, this is a big win for Sanford. Guarantees another winning season for Pete Hurt after being two and four at one time during this season. He's yep. got to be pleased with that. They'll have to run one play. Yep, two and four. And they would have won four in a row. And that'll do it. Sanford will win this game. 46 
to 32. A wild shootout. And I've got to say that Jake Rackley would be our Sarah Chevrolet. The final score. Top dog of the game. 208 yards unofficially. Two touchdowns, 35 rushing. I don't think you'd argue with me. No. 243 for Jake Rackley. Now he comes in passing about 130 yards per game to be over 200 yards with the tight passing that he did. He made some great throws with some great catches. And that's a big win for Sam. Pete Hurt, six and four now on the year third straight winning season for the Bulldogs with a young football team and a chance to go seven and four we just get that third quarter knocked out yeah we can just shorten the game to the first second and fourth quarter right. Sanford being the top ten in America we'll take a break we'll come back with more here from Cyber Stadium homecoming win for the dogs stay with us Where can you get 2.9% financing on 12 different models? The Big Value Big Savings Event at your Southern Chevy dealers, where we've made buying easier than ever because Chevrolet has just authorized 2.9%. Welcome back to Cyber Stadium. Scott Griffin here with Pete Hurt. Uh, congratulations, 46-32, your third straight winning season. Good to get that one out of the way. Well, it is, and, um, you know, we uh, for a while, you know, we've certainly made it exciting today. It's kind of like a track meet out there, but I'm, but I'm real pleased with our offense. They did a great job coming through today, and, and they've struggled at times today, and, I mean, at times this year, but, boy, what a what a great time for them to come through, and they, they won the football game for us, and we... We, we did not defend the option very good at all today, and, uh, you know, that's my fault. I call the defenses, and so I've got to do a better job getting our kids in the right uh, positions. But but I'm tickled to death for our players. You know, they've worked hard. They've, they've come back from two and four record to now I got it six and four and won four in a row, and, and, and it's a team game. And I told them, you know, some days, you know, de you win it with defense, some days kicking game, and some days uh, with offense, and it's good to, to see us win one, you know, that way. And it doesn't matter to me whether it's a – bunch of points on the board or a few points as long as we win. The wide receivers had combined for 10 catches the last four games. Today they had 10. Jake got them the football too, 14 out of 21. He's our Sarah Chevrolet offensive uh, player of the game, 225 yards for him. Well, I thought uh, Jake did a good job. Our offensive line did a got good job protecting most of the, uh, the afternoon, and our receivers got open, caught the ball, uh, made some big plays. You know, we've not been a real big big play type of team, and, and John Porter made a nice catch, and Michael Watson made a nice catch, and Terry Salter made several of them, and Jake threw the ball real well at times and, and did a great job, and it was good to see our passing game come through and not have to rely so much on the run, even though we ran the football well, too, and it was a good mixture by our offensive of staff and uh, they did a great job this week you know preparing for the game and had a great game plan felt like we had some mismatches in their secondary going into the football game and and they did a great job uh, you know uh, matching up back there finally the goal the carrot still there six and four but now the winning season is insured what do you do next week it's the last game but do you worry a little bit about having them ready well you know you'd like to think that um, you know I, I talked to them this week. I thought we were ready to play. I, I didn't think today it was, it was a lack of effort on, you know, or being flat or anything like that defensively. We just didn't do a very good job of assignment football, and I didn't do a very good job of, of having a good game plan, but I thought our kids were ready to play, and, and one of the points I tried to emphasize to them coming into this week was, you know, you work year-round for 11 Saturdays in the fall, and, uh, you know, you got a lot of things that we're trying to do with our football program. We, you know, we won the state championship, I think, in one double-A football. We've got a winning season, and now, you know, if we can make improvement from last year and go to seven and four, and I, and I attribute, I, I mean, I think it's great for our kids if we could come back and go from two and four to winning five in a row at the end of the season. That would be a great uh, deal for our kids to do and a great accomplishment, I think. And I feel like our program is still moving in the right direction. we still got a young football team. I think they're getting better. And so we got a lot of things going, but uh, you only get 11 Saturday. They get up here and lift weights at 5.30 in the off season. They go through two a days. And you got you do all that for 11 Saturdays in the fall, and you better take advantage of it. All right, Coach. Good luck against Western Carolina next week. We'll take a break. We'll come back with some of the final team stats here from Cyber State. The Bulldogs winners, 46-32. Stay with us. You're watching ACN Sports.
Welcome back to the mushy field here at Cyber Stadium, but a win again for the Bulldogs. Four in a row, 46-32 over Elon College. Let's take a look at the stats now, and we see the Sanford in the lead in first downs, 24 of those things today. Both teams with 440 total yards, but Sanford ran the ball good enough, and then Jake Rackley, the big day, throwing it with 225 yards. Time of possession, nine minutes in Sanford's favor, so the total offense the same, but really, Sanford won this game. They had weak moments, but uh, still ended up winning the football game. It wasn't given to them. No, it wasn't. Sanford came out and played a great game. Jake, especially, he comes into the game averaging 135 yards passing a game, comes in, throws almost 100 yards more than that. So a great game by Jake. And it's like Coach Hurt said in an interview before uh, this game during the week in the newspaper that you defend the wishbone and a few big plays can sneak up and bite you. And you saw that today. The wishbone did sneak up and bite Sanford, but their offense scored enough points to win the game for them. Exciting game for you fans at home, though, here on ACN Sports. Finally, the winning season is insured. Next week, West Carolina, can there be any letdown in the final game of the year when you already have a winning season in pocket? Can there? Yeah, I don't think there will be. I think you have good senior leadership by a few key guys on the offensive line, Jake Rackley, quarterback. Those guys want to go out winners. There's a special taste that, that stays in your mouth when you go out a winner, and I think that'll be enough to get them over the hump, to get them ready. And they know that that Elon College played Western Carolina to a one-point game. So they know that, or Western Kentucky, excuse me, they know it's going to be a good game. They know they're going to face a good team next week, so they'll be ready. As the summer ended, the Bulldogs were two and four. As Barry Manilow sings, when October goes, the Bulldogs now have won four in a row, heading for a seven and four season. If they can win next week against Western Carolina, you can see that right here on ACN Sports. Thanks to all the guys in the truck, Anthony Early, and all you guys do a great job. For Colin Hutto, Scott Griffin saying so long here from homecoming. Sanford and Elon, the Bulldogs win it 46-32. We'll see you next week, everybody.